All right. And from Anonymous, we have a $150 donation saying, my favorite game ever. Let's go. Talking about Jet Set Radio Future. And it looks like we are ready to get started. So, Chad, I hope you are ready for Alice running Jet Set Radio Future. Take it away, Alice. Alice might have stepped away for a second. Uh, not the right time. <laughs> um... She will be back in a moment, I'm sure. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I literally had to just stay for one second. All right. We're Amazing. good back. Cool. Hi, everyone. My name's Alice. Um, I'm here. <laughs> Um, and yeah, today we're running Jet Set Radio Future. This game is amazing. Um, loads of people have a lot of cool memories of this game. Um, we're not going to talk too much about what's going on with it straight away because there's going to be a lot of opportunity to talk about it during the run. So just before we get started, I'd like to introduce my commentator, Twinkachu. Hello, um, I'm Twinkachu. I use they, them pronouns, and I am going to be commentating. I'm going to be walking you through the chaos that is the speed run. Amazing, cool. So I do have to check before we start, just because it's going to influence some of these weird settings that you're seeing on the left there. Um, did we meet the incentive for GG percent? We absolutely did. Amazing, cool. So I don't need to change any settings. That's fantastic. Um, GG percent, for those who don't know, is essentially getting all of the main story characters throughout the game, um, in addition to the any percent requirements. So you'll see us picking up some of them. We can talk about it a bit more as we get into the run. So without further ado, I'm ready to start on time. So we're going to go in three two one go all right so we're gonna get started also a listen you have a sec can you share your uh video feed in discord oh absolutely um. <laughs> there we go all right so this is jsrf it is a platformer skating game we play as this game called the ggs um we run around this futuristic version of tokyo spraying graffiti interacting with rival gangs um fighting against this big evil corporation it's a good time um, this is just the tutorial. It's teaching a to do things like grind on rails and jump, which we are very good at because we're speedrunners. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, hey, everyone, we will be right back. In the meantime, I am just going to read a couple donations. A big thanks to Char Bunny, who donated $30. GG percent, please. And we absolutely, like I said, we did hit that incentive. So thank you so much, Char Bunny, for your donation. And from Sna RK, $15. Glad to help. Smiley Face, thank you so much. And Smiley Face, back to you. It's a beautiful day today. And you know what? I mentioned them earlier. So, you know what? This is probably a good time to talk about some prizes we have. Um, today, we have a super cool Charmander family mini print, which has the full evolutionary line of the original Firestarter, gorgeously painted in red ink. We also have a super handy dandy and stylish Game Boy tote bag, a dark Meta Knight charm with some incredible original artwork, and even an acrylic painting of the Kanto starter Pokemon. So some absolutely cool prizes. If you want a chance to win, get your donations in. And I see a donation here for $100 from Lady Wind. It just says, boop, got your nose. Thank you so much, Lady Wind, for your donation. And I got a donation here from Petty for $85. No comment, but hey, thank you so much for your donation. Every little bit helps. Keep in mind, we are raising money for Malala Fund. Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education, invests in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. You can learn more at Malala.org.
And I see a donation here from Heldon Subret for $5. Thank you so much for your donation. And that's a good reminder. Every little donation helps. Doesn't matter if it's $5, $50, $500. Your donations matter, and it's going to an absolutely wonderful cause. So thank you so much, everyone. It means a lot. And I know I told you all about GG percent, which we did meet that incentive. Thank you so much, chat. But did you know we actually have an open bid war right now for Jet Set Radio Future? For you get to pick the final boss character. You get a choice between quite a number of characters here that you get to choose which one that Alice is going to use to fight that final boss. Currently in the lead with $15 is Cube, followed up by Soda with $5, and then Corn for $1. I can see a lot of cool names here. I don't know a ton about this game, but I am so excited. But I'm seeing names like Gum, Jazz, Yo-Yo, lots of cool characters. So if you want to pick the character that Alice is going to use to fight that final boss with, get a donation in, pick that incentive, pick your favorite character, and you might just get to see them live on stream. And from Striker ADR, $15 donation celebrating 37K. Yes, guys, we, everyone, we crossed $37,000. Thank you so much for your donations. And reminder, we want to hit $50,000 by the end of the Pokemon Red Run. If you want to see Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate Intermission as the first bonus run of this marathon. So donations, get them in. Everything goes towards this incentive. Reminder, you can still donate to an incentive or a bid war, still get in for prizes. Everything goes towards that. So donations in now. Thank you so much, everyone. You're all amazing. And I got a donation here from Math Hacker. $50, no comment. But hey, thank you so much for your donation. Greatly appreciate it. And I also have a $35 donation here from Anonymous. No comment, but hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And coming up after... Jet Set Radio Future today, we will have Skybills running Pokemon Stadium. And did you know we have an incentive open for that? Um, we, If we raise $2,500, Skybills will attempt to fight the fifth gym leader, Koga, in the Pokemon Stadium run after defeating Erica. This is something I know you all want to see. So get your donations in now to meet that incentive. All right, looks like we are ready to go with Jet Set Radio Future. So please, chat, get ready for Alis running Jet Set Radio Future with Twinkle Chew on commentary. All right. Hello, everyone. It's me, Alis. Um, we're back. Um, hopefully, hopefully, it's all going very smoothly this time. Um, so this is Jet Set Radio Future. Um, this is a fantastic game. It's very difficult to describe exactly what it is um, in a short period of time, but we'll have plenty of time throughout the run to kind of go over what the game is and what's going on. Uh, before we get started again, um, Twinkachu, did you want to introduce yourself again? Uh, nothing has changed in the last five minutes. I am still Twinkachu, um, and I'm here to commentate this run. Fantastic. So we'll get started again with the timer in three, two, one, go. All right, so once again, welcome to Futuristic Tokyo. Um, this is the garage. It's just the little tutorial level. It's also a main hub of the world. We are playing as Yo-Yo, who is one of the characters in this bid war. Um, so this is the game just teaching us the basics of movement. This game has a really interesting movement mechanic. It lends itself really well to really fluid speedrun movement. Um, unfortunately, this is just the basic stuff. So this is, this is how you grind on a rail. This is how you jump. Um, and all of that movement is going to get strung together in really interesting ways throughout the run. Um, yeah. So what else is going on here? <laughs> um, Teaching us about cans, that's a thing. Oh, right, cans. 
uh, graffiti is one of kind of the core components of this game. Uh, you see Aelis here picking up some cans. These can be used to spray graffiti, which is um, what we will be spending most of the run doing. Uh, cans can also be used to, to boost dash. It costs 10 cans, but it sends you really fast. And then are also used um, in fights. So you can spray your enemies with graffiti because this game makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> and so we'll see yeah, that. Yeah, definitely how spray paint works in real life, right? Oh yeah, for sure. This game is you, very like, realistic. Boost. Also, for those who've um, played the game before, um, one of the things, because we're actually playing on a modified um, like launcher for the game, so it's all the original game files, but we kind of like have a, a couple of small modifications that just make speedrunning the game a little bit more um, pleasant, I want to say. Um, basically, th this game has very long cutscenes, and after like a minute of gameplay, you're kind of sat in a cutscene for like... I mean, you can see the in-game timer in the top left there. It's already gone up to three minutes. That's because we skipped like a three-minute long cutscene, so... Um, if you do that every reset, it gets very like grating, especially in the game that gets quite optimized quite quickly. So, one of the longest cutscenes in the game is the first one out of the garage, um, and it is very painful to run against. Uh, so we just skip them for convenience. But we are now into Dogenzaka Hill, the first proper area, um, putting to use these new skills we just gained, like jumping and shuffling. Um, so Aelis is going to pick up, that was a graffiti soul there. These are collectibles. They aren't a huge deal in this category. You have to hit a certain threshold by a certain point in the run. Um, but there are other categories that are more focused on picking up all of those collectibles. Um, and so Aelis is going to head down here, pick up another soul, and start doing the first round of graffiti. Uh, for the first 60% of the game, uh, pretty much the structure is you go into a bunch of different areas and you'll run around and spray all of the tags and then you'll have some sort of interaction with a rival gang or with the police or with an enemy of some sort. So you'll race against an enemy or you'll fight some cops um, and then you'll go on to the next area. Uh, this area is kind of just a giant loop <laughs> um, because the game is trying to be nice to you. But uh, fun fact about the loop, though, it's physically impossible. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> with a, a bunch fun of thing. other stages. All of the loop levels. If you look at the like collision, um, we have a collision viewer tool that's really cool. Um, all of them go downhill the entire time. So at some point at the end of the loop, the game seamlessly warps you back up. It's really neat. If you mess up badly enough, you can get into the area under the warp too. All right, so we yeah. finished all the graffiti because. It's no problem. Um, and here we meet Beat, who is one of the GGs. Uh, we're going to talk to him, and he's going to challenge us to a fight. Um, and so in just a second, we're going to race him around the area. First, we're going to pick up this tape. Um, these tapes unlock special challenges that let you get more souls in areas. Um, each area has five different challenges that you can complete their little movement challenges, like do a certain combo on a rail or do a certain number of a certain kind of trick. Um, this is the only tape we pick up in GG% percent, um, because normally it's faster to just get the souls that are on the map by default, but uh, there's one soul in this area that's really, really quick to unlock. So we're going to pick up the tape because it's right on route and then unlock the air soul at the end of this half pipe. Yeah, uh, we should probably say as well, the reason why it's called GG% percent, um, is because the gang is called the GGs. So we would call it all characters, but the um, the main thing with that is that in order to get all the characters, you basically have to complete an entire 100% run of the game almost. So yeah. rather than having that be something that people do, um, we kind of went with like all the characters you can get before the post game. So. That just happens to be all the canonical members of the gang, the GGs. So that's why we called it that. Yeah, the most convenient like explanation I've heard is that it's all story characters. You can unlock bonus rival characters at the end by doing some extra challenges. But again, that requires hundoing the game, which we don't have time for. So now, no. we, yeah, now we are racing beat. Um, it's just running a lap around this uh, area that we just sprayed all the graffiti in going to take about a minute and a half if people want to bet how long it'll take. 
the, the best um the best um thing about if you, there was an all characters run that involved doing the hondo stuff you'd have like 55 minutes of auto scrollers at the end that's the best part of hondo is jet yeah tech. absolutely that's definitely my favorite bit of that run <laughs> everyone loves jet tech yeah <laughs> it's time to um, get comfy in order to unlock the post-game characters, you have to get all of the souls, which requires doing all of the areas twice, or once if you're really fast. Um, which is makes the run significantly longer. GG percent is only slightly longer than an any percent run, be two-ish hours. Yeah, so I think um, our estimate's two hours, and it should be should be under that, hopefully, unless something goes catastrophically wrong, so fingers <laughs> crossed. Yeah. Tempting fate a little bit, I know, but... There are a couple major route changes, but we'll talk about those when we get to them. So, 124, decent beat race. Yeah, pretty good. There's, a, there's a really cool strike you can do in there called the negative shuffle, but um, I am not good at it. So, <laughs> I decided rather than flailing about and getting beaten up by beat, then it would just be better to go straight for it. Yeah. The negative shuffle trick is really cool. I think someone casually playing the game accidentally discovered it. Um, if you knock into an enemy, if you get knocked down by an enemy while you're in a mechanic called a shuffle, um, instead of decreasing your speed at normal deceleration, it'll do it in reverse and it'll just amplify your speed. It's wild. Uh, here's the first cop fight of the game. Uh, because the fighting mechanics are very well thought out and very difficult, you just knock into the cops and spray them down. Um. I just instinctively pressed my split key, so hopefully that <laughs> didn't perform a hot key that has messed everything up. Um, yeah. I think we're all good. I think we look fine. We survived. I'll try and avoid pressing the split button <laughs> when yep. I don't have live split open. Nice. We have made it in to Shibuya Terminal, the next area of the run. This is also kind of a major hub of area. Um, this one's a lot less linear. Dogen we saw was just a circle. This is a big wide open area, so this was much more of, more of a routing challenge. Um, but it also means slightly more interesting speed tech. So we're gonna run around and spray all the graffiti on these buses. Gonna not get hit by cars. The car, the traffic cycle here is really unkind. Ooh, interesting Ooh. rail. Rail moment. And interesting speed as well. <laughs> Should be a why. Game hard. It's all good. <laughs> we will survive. Um. So yeah, this is Ooh, the end of this area. Car. There was a cutscene that I didn't point out right at the beginning where it introduced Poison Jam, who are the first kind of major mm. rival gang who yeah, we're fighting. Things. And we'll properly meet them at the end of this section. But for now, we're covering up their graffiti with our own tags because we're having a turf war. Oh, wow. Rails just go backwards today, apparently. <laughs> That's like the theme. Yeah. This... One thing you see a lot of in this stage as well is a quick turning. Oh yeah, that is an important movement mechanic. It's You'll see Aelis turning 90 degrees to the left super rapidly. It's actually an animation cancel, um, technically. Uh, if you twist your stick correctly, it'll just turn you 90 degrees immediately. Um, in the broader scheme of this game, it's a relatively new discovery, but it makes the movement so much smoother, and you can get really nice, precise turns. So you can see me doing it here, like where like I just turn around very quickly against those buses. Yeah. Um, it's just like, otherwise you'd have to do a complete stop in order to turn around like on a 180 or do a big loop, both of which would be very slow. Yep. You also notice I'm turning backwards. There's just a button that turns you the other way around, and it makes turning like easier. So quick turns are much much nicer when you're back turned. The yeah. back turn mechanics kind of come into the game in like 100% a lot, where um you need to get more point totals because the backwards tricks are worth more than the forwards tricks. So you want to get more points that way to unlock souls and things like that. But um in in this run, it's just kind of to help with the movement a little bit. Yeah, often it, you can get really nice 90 degree quick turns if you're facing forwards, but you can get the really quick 180 degree quick turns if you're backwards. Um, yeah, it just makes the movement a little bit more fluid. Oh, so here's Poison Jam. This is the first major rival gang 
Um, we sprayed over all their graffiti, and now they're challenging us to show off our skating skills, which involve talking to them and then skating over to them. Except the game doesn't actually track the route you take to get there, so you can kind of just walk over if you want. <laughs> they do this, like, cool movement sequence that the game kind of intends for you to follow, but we're going to detour and pick up these two default souls over here on our way over. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, get, getting souls is like somewhat tight on the routing. Um, there are a couple of backups you can get, but you'd, you'd obviously rather not get them. Um, especially if you go for a strat that I will be going for in this run called Heli Skip, um, then the routing gets a little bit more tight because one of the backups that you could normally go for is kind of off the menu to some degree. So, Yeah. We'll talk about soul routing as it comes up. There are two points in the run where you need to have a set number of souls, although one of them is you have to have like five souls a couple levels in and it is so easy to get that because you knock so many defaults out of the way early that it's barely an issue. Um, yeah, we've already met that requirement, I believe. Yep. So. <laughs> we have three more levels to go before this uh, checkpoint and we have already met the requirement. Grab that. Another default. So we get all of the defaults here in Shibuya because they are all very quick. And this is Combo, who is our rival he's not really in a gang he's just kind of chilling um yeah he's, our... he's upset that the, there's purple graffiti all over his place because apparently he doesn't like purple yeah that's pretty rude of him honestly um i know and so he is also challenging us to uh do this combo that he is doing some people call this trick combo combo which always amuses me except also the game doesn't completely track the route you take here so we're gonna do it much better than he did Cause... I could get hit by a bus, though. That's definitely a thing that could happen here. Yeah. The buses also have super weird hitboxes. Um, oh, some yeah. of the time, they just ruin you from halfway across the level. Yeah, but... there's like one that quite famously hits you through the railing. So you're on the pavement on the other side of the railing, and the bus is just like, nope, I don't care. You're not safe. I'm going to hit you. Yep. Yep. The buses are so mean. The traffic in this city is insane. Yeah. No regard for skaters. That they'll see you from like three meters away and stop. But if you're directly in front of them, they'll just kind of start speeding up instead. Like they'll just keep. It's going. really horrible. Yeah. There's there's a trick in one of the ILs where you have to jump on top of a car and then use the car's like momentum to launch yourself forward, and that trick is horrible. It, it looks really cool though. You go so. Fast. It does. Yeah. Oh, so here is one of our like main ongoing enemies. This is Hayashi. We're gonna see him a bunch. Um, he works for Rokaku, who is the oh, this big bad of every the game. Time. This cop fight likes to just ruin your life sometimes. So yeah, we're gonna cop. knock down these cops. Hayashi is also here. You don't have to spray him down. Like, you don't have to actually fight him. You can just leave him and only take care of the cops. So we're gonna do that. Because why would we? Oh, I missed some of them. That's fine. Um, Please knock them yeah. down. <laughs> One of the fun things about this cop fight is that the way the strategy was explained to me when I started running this game was, okay, imagine the cops are like bowling pins. You're just going to knock <laughs> That's them That's basically over. it. I was thinking that. I was like, yeah, they are basically bowling pins. Like... They're bowling pins and you are a bowling ball. That is how the strat gets explained to baby runners. All right. So we survived Shibuya. We switched characters. This is Gum. Um... Gum is who we will be using for most of the run because she has better cornering, which means she can execute more precise kind of turns and jumps and stuff like that, which means we get more cool movement. We use Yo-Yo for the first couple of areas just because he is the character you have selected by default and he is totally fine um, until the game naturally prompts you to select a character. Yeah, um, there's a number of places in the game where it's like surprisingly lenient what character you pick. Yeah. Um, so you might see some strats like from um, some runners who want to save like, you know, like one or two seconds swapping back to Yo-Yo. And then rather than swapping back to Gum again for the purpose that you're doing, then they'll just stay as Yo-Yo for the section of the run. Like. Yeah, Yo-Yo strats. Uh, this, Yo -Yo is strats. <laughs> this is Chuo Street, uh, as the dialogue just informed you. I'm not listening to the game audio. I think that's what the dialogue is. Um, this oh, is our this last bit of this next brain. area. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
We have a slight change of pace here. Uh, the <laughs> Tokyo's government's um, response to kids spraying graffiti is tanks. So we're gonna fight some tanks now. Um, you saw Alice doing some moderately precise movement there to get this wall of sprays before the tanks spawn. Uh, it saves time at the end of the level. It lets you do it without backtracking. But now we're gonna fight some tanks. Fortunately, our spray paint is extremely powerful and can oh. destroy tanks. And cans. Yeah. It's weird, there's an extra can there for some reason. Doesn't normally happen. They um, do that sometimes. It's they, very annoying. I think they take between three and five cans to knock down, but sometimes they just like to screw you over. Um, it's unkind. One thing we should probably talk about as well is um, the difference between English and Japanese in this game. So oh, like um, yeah. the the Japanese text saves a lot of time um, over the English text. However, um, it does make certain tricks harder because as you saw with, already with um, me trying to spray that graffiti before the tank spawned, um, you're going to see like scenarios where we're trying to get stuff done before things spawn in and the Japanese text obviously makes that slightly more difficult because you have to do it um, within a smaller time frame. Yeah, there are some like less competitive game modes that still run on English and um, movement and timing based tricks just become so much more lenient. Of course, I think Japanese saves two or three minutes over the English version. There's this one specific cutscene at the end that's just significantly shorter. Other than that, the cutscene times don't vary that oh, much. Oh, wow. The Japanese ones are generally a little bit shorter, but there's one cutscene that is so long that it genuinely saves multiple minutes to play on Japanese. <laughs> yeah, it is a long cutscene. Did we miss the Thank yeet? You. Yeah, we missed the yeet, sadly. Uh, so we saw Hayashi there again. Um, that time you actually have to spray him down, or if you hit him at the right angle, you can just knock him off the building um, and he'll just explode. It's fun game mechanics. Um, Aidless missed the angle, though. It's relatively precise, and it doesn't yeah. save much time either. It's just fun. Yeah, it's cool. Like, <laughs> I think it's a little bit faster, and you get like slightly better cans for it, but it's like a two-second difference. Uh, this area this is... is the bit. Yeah, this is the I always bit. have to remember this bit. <laughs> like, Don't forget the soul. This is the canal soul, because this is in the back of the canals. All of the souls have names also, not like officially, just we're nerds with too much time on our hands who have named all of the souls. Yeah, otherwise they're all numbers, which is yeah. just not easy to keep track of. Yeah. Chuo is another one of these loop areas, although it's a little less straightforward than like Dogen, which is literally just a no, oval. Um, so we have slightly more complicated movement back here in this alley got this whole rail section but we're mostly just making our way back to where we started at this point oh, you'll see me going for the very edges of these billboards um that's kind of um it, it's a mechanic called like kissing so basically um i mean Twiggy, you can explain it because it's it's kind of complicated but it, it's a small like time save if you manage to land just on the edge yeah so the way rails and billboards handle speed is that when you land on a rail or a billboard, it gives you a speed modifier. It multiplies your speed to get you up to regular grinding or, yeah, grinding speed, which is faster than just walking speed. And then after a frame, it applies a cap um, so that you don't just accelerate forever. But if you manage to land on a rail or billboard and leave it on the same frame, the cap never applies. And so you get more than max speed um, and go really fast. And they also, they chain, and so you can chain a bunch of them together and go flying. You see it a lot in ILs, but those, uh, what are called kisses, which is you hit a billboard right at the edge, so you leave it on the same frame, are not that hard to go for and are just like a little speed boost that you can get. Uh, so Yeah, frame boosts would be like the bigger versions. Yeah. Frame boosts become really important in things like ILs in categories like any percent and GG percent. It's just like a fun little speed boost you can get sometimes. <laughs> I'll point it yeah, out if sure. it happens. It's cool. Yeah, but um, it's definitely not something you'd be like, 
oh, I'm like an hour into a run and I didn't get one frame boost, I'm going to reset. It's not that kind of yeah. tech, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting about JSRF is at moderate levels, there aren't really tricks like that. Like, if you die somewhere, you, maybe your run is irrecoverable, but a lot of the time, like, runs, there. all of the time save is in your movement, so you can make up from a lot. It's yeah, a very definitely. friendly game when it wants to be. When it wants to when be. Wants We're going to see some not friendly tricks later, trust me. Oh, There's one I we're forgot. gonna be having to get guaranteed, so... Yeah. Ooh. Oh, right, Cucumber. We'll talk about that in a second. I forgot yeah. to mention, at the end of Chuo Street, it prompts you to race Poison Jam. We didn't do that. We'll show you why in just a second. Um, this is also where we pick up our first optional character, so the first requirement for GG%. Yeah, her name is Rith. She's a community favorite. Um, yeah, if you've played the original JSR, um, she is Mew from that game. She's the same yeah. character. Yeah, there are a lot of the same characters in JSR and JSRF, but they have slightly different names and designs. So here's Rith. We're gonna talk to her. She's gonna say, hey, do this cool trick. And then we're gonna follow her. And that is how we unlock her. Most of the characters that are unlockable either have a little movement challenge like that, um, or like Combo also, his movement challenge unlocked him as a playable character. Or they have what Beat had, which is a race. You race them around an area. Um, we're not actually doing the Rith thing all in one, right? No, so is we this... get Rith on the way out again, because she's by the exit now. So we start her off here, we finish off RDH, and then we go and get her at the end. Yeah, this is Rakakudai Heights. I don't know if I said the name of the area. So this is called so this Rift is a, Skip. Yeah, this yeah. is a trick. I got the good angle, I think. There we go, cool, right. Cool. So we're out of bounds now. Um, we're going to do this to Death Warp out here. The reason why is because that poison jam fight we skipped meant that a barrier in this level did not get opened. So we've just managed to death warp around that barrier and we are now past that section completely. Yeah, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to race poison jam in Chuo Street and then you go into RDH and you talk to them and they run around a bunch and eventually they knock over this gate that we completely bypassed. Um, they spend multiple minutes like running around and talking and it's super slow and kind of painful. Um, and so instead you can just clip out of bounds and uh, warp to a later point in the level past where this gate spawns. Uh, so we're now in the upper half of this level. Um, once we complete the graffiti, it um, removes the gate anyways, so we can just leave normally too, which is weird, but how the game works. Um, there's also, uh, so we saw another cop fight. What's interesting about this area, RDH, is that it has three cop fights, but two of them are skippable if you're careful. So coming up, we're going to see Ayla's doing some slightly funky movement to avoid the trigger for this cop fight. Once I'm done wrestling with the graffiti camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, graffiti camera. So here we go. So this is skipping a big trigger for a fight, but... This kind spray is kind of inside right of it. There. Yeah. So we want to go as close as we can. There we go. Cool. Right. And then we need to get this side. Cool. Right. We got it. So that spray is the only one that you can kind of mess up. I, you have to get very close to the trigger for the fight to be able to spray that one. So it's the worst fight to hit as well. It takes so long. It also lags your Xbox so much because it spawns just an unreasonable amount of cops at once and it just obliterates your frame rate. Um, but yeah. So one thing this game does is to force you into these cop fights, it puts the trigger around sprays, but if you're really careful, you can get the spray and dodge it, um, which becomes a big part of the routing, especially in this area. Yeah, I just did that jump very safe there. I normally wouldn't bother, but um, I had a run the other day where I went too slowly off the edge and I ended up just like falling right the way to the bottom, so don't want to do that. This is also a cop fight skip. Um, there's a trigger all around this tag we're about to jump to, but we just jumped directly over it, and now we're going to dodge around it. Yeah, the very end of this is a cop fight, so you don't want to go any further than I just went, basically. If you walk past the other end of that tag, yeah, it spawns a, a small cop fight. It's like three cops. It's not that bad to hit, but... Yeah, you'd just rather not do it. And so now we're going to finish collecting Rith. If she ran off this way earlier, we're going to go meet her and unlock her. 
tried to over that rail, didn't quite make it. So yeah, this one's kind of a... It's interesting that it, like, removes the barriers from the train station when you clear the zone, but it doesn't reset Rift's position. That always confused me. Yeah, it also clears cop fights when you um, complete all graffiti. So once you get the little dance that signifies that you've completed the graffiti, you're no longer in danger of hitting that trigger, like, right at the end of the spray, which is weird. I don't know. It's very convenient for our purposes, but it's a weird from a game design point of view. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we've got we should, uh, now. Everyone we should probably say take hi there. Cam real quick before we get to the next, uh, next zone. <laughs> yeah, should. especially because I'm getting stuck here, apparently. Nice. Stalling. Um, <laughs> Stalling for graffiti camera. Stalling for content. So the game has this mechanic called graffiti camera, where as you are spraying tags, it adjusts its position uh, the position of your camera to try to show you the tag that you're spraying. Um, and it, it's nice, it gives you a little view of what you're doing. It is... All of your controls are camera relative, so when you start spraying, your controls shift, and it is very inconvenient for precise movement. Um, a big, like, proportion of... a big portion of the speedrun routing is just learning how to deal with this camera. <laughs> that sometimes just likes to screw you over. Yeah, it's very, very frustrating. Like, it's already happened a few times where I kind of just, like, shoot off in the wrong direction after a graffiti spray, and that's because the ca the controls are still slightly reversed. You can normally avoid it by, like, jumping. Also, this is a skip, by the way. Um, this is um, Quick Light. Oh, yeah. Um, this is... We're gonna jump on this wall and then clip through a different wall, and it'll warp us directly into the light side of this map. This is 99th Street. It is divided into three areas. Um, this is light side. There's like a center area and then there's dark side. Um, Didn't quite slow down enough, that's fine. Give me just a second and I'll explain the cop fights. <laughs> there we go, right, we finally got him. Da -da -da. Yeah, so th this this section here is kind of like, we're doing this fight here. There is meant to be another one with these searchlights, but we're going to skip that later on in the stage. But this was relatively simple. You just got to just gotta jump on him and spray him. Yeah. Uh, the way the stage works is that there are two cop fights, and we have a skip for one of them, but it requires you to do one of them. They aren't both skippable. Um, Get the reverse. Yeah. I don't even know what these searchlight things are supposed to be. They're like giant spotlights and they shoot you, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly like it's dark in here. Like, <laughs> I don't know why they need the spotlight to see me specifically, but... This is the side that is lit up. I don't... What is their Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and so then we're gonna run around and spray graffiti here. Uh, this, the whole area of 99th isn't a loop in the way that some levels are, but each little sub area is kind of a loop. So we're gonna do a loop around here and then ride back to the middle. Wonder, are these good cans? Probably not. I don't think these are good cans. I want more cans. I usually cans, get them. Okay. Uh, another big component of the speedrun is managing your cans. Um, or as we call it, management. <laughs> Which is the best name for anything ever. <laughs> um, so you have to make sure you have enough cans to do all of the graffiti you need, but also to go fast and boost everywhere. A lot of the speedrun tricks rely on being able to boost dash, so you really have to be careful. Here we're going to switch characters, because switching characters reloads the level, which reloads the dialogue. This dialogue here, um, the end of this dialogue is what spawns the next cop fight. And so if you interrupt it with another piece of dialogue in the middle, uh, the dialogue never ends and the cop fight can never spawn. So that little character switch um, and like dialogue trigger skip the cop fight. I have no idea how someone discovered that, but that's super neat. Probably someone who's just always triggered that at the same time in their normal playthrough and then was like, wait, there's a fight here? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Why are all the speedrunners doing fights here? I need to tell them. <laughs> yeah. So that's a neat little piece of tech. Now we're running out to dark side, which is uh, laid out similarly to light side, except this time it's dark because there's a power outage. 
Um, there's a lore explanation for why the power is out, and I do not remember what it is because I do not pay attention to this game's story. Yeah, especially with the cutscene skipped, it's been a while since I actually remember <laughs> what goes on in a lot of this game. Yeah. I know the basic stuff, obviously, but like the power outage, like DJK brings it up. He's like, there's a mysterious power outage, and it never gets mentioned again, I think. So. Yeah. The story like barely makes sense as is and then the fact that we skip so much of it and the cutscenes like there, there was no chance it's all yeah. gone <laughs> let's grab some cans here we've got yeah. a few more sprays left to go and then we've got our um our next kind of challenge against a rival oh we have a new kind up. of challenge in this area we have the flag battle um we are going to be racing against rival gang rapid 99 they're actually one of, this is the first place where the game checks your soul count. It checks that you have, I believe, 25 or 30 souls. It's five more yeah. than you start with. Um, yeah, you start with a bunch. That's another thing to mention. I obviously haven't picked up 25 souls yet, but yeah. um, you start with a lot. You need five more than you started with, which we are well past that point. It is almost difficult to not be at that point when you get here, but... So, With dragon? Yeah, we go. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid trick that barely saves any time. <laughs> it's just a smooth little piece of movement there. All right. So this is Rapid 99. The game is going to spawn some flags. We're playing Capture the Flag with Rapid 99, basically. Um, we're going to let them just go get the first flag so that we can pick up the second one as soon as it spawns on the map, uh, which is over in the dark sides. Which is why Rapid 99 went like off in a different direction. Yeah, so basically we're going to be picking up flags. Um, oh, whoop, I say that as if I'm actually <laughs> getting the flag right now. The flag is going to spawn there. There we go. Right. Um, yeah, so we're picking up flags two, three, and five, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. Well, um, well it's, it's relatively tight happens. movement to be able to get the third flag because basically... It, you can get it before Rapid 99 do, but the AI kind of breaks if you get it at a certain time, and then they can kind of like mess you around a bit and end up winning the fight, which we don't want to do, so. The AI is- There we is, go, so they got number yeah. four. Okay, so the AI in this game is also really something, but Alice managed to time that so that she can pick up the second flag and then the third flag, and then Rapid 99 immediately picks up the fourth flag so she can get the fifth one uh, in all in quick succession. Sometimes they don't pick up the fourth flag and you have to go back down that tower and grab it for yourself. All right, is it cucumber time? It's cucumber time. Let's try and explain this. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So, Required trick in this category, by the way. So we have to do it. There's no alternative. So one of the things people who have played this game casually will remember is the sewers because they suck. Um, <laughs> There, it's this super vertical level. It's super difficult. It's super punishing. Um, one of the first major tricks that was discovered in this speedrun is a skip for sewers. You can jump around a hitbox and skip it. But if you skip the sewers, you don't unlock Garum, who is the character we are about to meet. So Garum guards the sewers, and he is going to ask us to do some little movement challenges in a second. Um, That's never it. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so if we do the sewer skip, we can't get Garum. Uh, with, and he is required for this category, GG%, because he's a character. So instead, you have to do this alternate trick, which is way newer, called Cucumber, in which we are going to jump at the corner of this half pipe that we're in and clip through it. And it'll send us out of the map and respawn us past the trigger for the sewers. And then we can go back and collect Garum without um, triggering like the sewers challenge, basically. It's convoluted and a little hard to understand. Um, yeah, it's a it's a horrible trick, basically. But um, it's it's probably one of the the l least consistent things to do in the game. It is hard. It is not an easy trick. It's yeah, if you were going precise. for like a. If you're going for an incredibly good time in any percent right now, you'd need to get it before this Garam tutorial starts. Because um, if you don't, then um, you have to do this tutorial. So it allows you to skip this tutorial. However, we need to do it anyway for GG percent because you can't unlock Garam without doing the tutorial. So it's not so much of a big deal that I didn't get it straight away. But in any percent, you get like three shots at it. And if you don't get it, then that's kind of 
that's kind yeah. of it, you know? Your run's kind of dead at that point if you really need the trick. Yeah, Cucumber is interesting because it's not required unless you're going for a really top time in any percent. In any percent, it says a minute and a half. It just skips this tutorial. Um, yeah. But in full game categories uh, where you need all the characters, it the alternative is doing sewers, which takes like 10 minutes. So we have plenty more time to try to hit this clip, but... Oh, that was so oh, close. That was so Did close. you see that? That was so close to it. I don't actually remember probably... the exact mechanics of how this works. I think you're getting like a frame boost off of this rail and it launches you through the collision or something. I'm something not like explaining that, yeah. that well and I'm gonna get yelled at by nerds in chat, but... <laughs> So Speaking of chat, we're just gonna chill. we can probably read some donations while I try and get this, because we could be we here sure for a while. This might take you got minutes. it. Alrighty, we got plenty of donations coming in. Ah, from Horde of Bees. I love that name. Oh, yeah. $25. Let's go JSRF. And uh, from Buttercup Bandito, $20 donation. Thank you so much for all that you at GDQ do for both the charities you raise fun funds for and the larger gaming community as a whole. Much love to all you wonderful people making things work from the behind the scenes and the excellent runners. We can probably and still keep going. I'm still, still going, going with these tricks, so yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> I've got $25 here from Emerald Ally. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone in the FF community for helping me feel so welcome. For helping me feel so welcome. It means much more to me than you know. Love and thanks, lesson three, lesson three. <laughs> and no comment on this one, but it's a $250 donation from Vitani. Thank you so much, wonderful. And actually, this would probably be a good time for me to remind everyone that we do have a bid war open for Jet Set Radio Future right now. You get to put in a bid on which final boss character Alice will use when we get to the final boss. But pretty self-explanatory, final boss character, final boss. There we go. So currently, Rinth is ahead with $75, followed by Combo at $45, and then Jazz sitting at $25. Uh, come on, Jazz, let's go. Come on, Jazz. Oh, all right, <laughs> let's get some donations for Jazz. That's the one Alice wants. Um, I am, I'm going to throw one in there, though. I, I want to see a couple donations in there for Yo-Yo, just because I love that name. Yo-Yo yo -Yo is, is cool. I'll take Yo-Yo. Yeah. Um, yeah, in the bid war, uh, you will see some of the characters we've already unlocked. Rith was just mentioned. Uh, we unlocked her in RDH. Combo, first or second character we unlocked. We'll meet Jazz later, but she's Alice and I's favorite, so <laughs> extra love for her. <laughs> Not to. Well, in this category, my girl Love Shockers isn't quite isn't in the route, sadly, because True. she is post game. But Jazz is also just optimal for the fight. Like she can hold more cans. She's the best character to use, but. Not to and sway emotionally, anything, she's also the best, but so. Jazz, best girl. We, Cucumber is very Come mean. On. This trick is being so mean today. I normally get this so much quicker. That's too late. Yeah. I think I think a year ago, this trick was thought to be like impossible, right? So yeah, the fact we're even doing it in runs now is wild. Yeah, this trick has only become run viable in the last little bit. Um, I say run viable. <laughs> That was close to. Um, yeah, there's so many that are like really close to being it. Like that again. That was <laughs> close. Uh, when it works, uh, Alice is just gonna fly right through the wall. It'll be great. Um, Come on, cucumber. Yeah. Do so you have more donations? Yeah, go for it. Seriously, <laughs> this trick is being really mean. Yeah, the community's That's getting donations in right now, and it's fantastic. So, uh, from Ace Bats, twenty five dollars. Hey. This game hey. was my childhood. I used to play it all the time on Sega Dreamcast. That's Good luck to my bats. favorite. <laughs> Good luck to my bats. favorite two player, one controller, one hundred percent runner. And shout outs <laughs> to Zakumi and the Nooner Nation. Hashtag Neum. <laughs> Okay, Pats, thank you. There's a lot to unpack in that donation. That um, and I like, need to concentrate on Cucumber. That was like five community in just There we go, we got, we got it. it! Finally! We're at three! Hey, yes. Hooray! That was Don't awesome! Don't forget Garam after all that. There we go, we okay. got him. And so we, we walk We did this back. for you, Garam. I hope you're happy. We walk back, we hit that trigger, uh, we collect Garam. Um, when you don't have your game set up properly to let you do sewer skip, Garam and the sewers, like, sequence have different triggers 
um, so you can collect Garum without having to actually do all of sewers. And now we're in the bottom point, where we're gonna do the final um, fight with Poison Jam, and then we'll move on to meet more enemies. Oh, that's not a good skip. No, it's not. Slightly late on the jump. This one's like semi-precise. We're yeah. basically trying to like wedge ourselves between the wall and that girder so that we kind of push through it. Yeah. That might um, be it. Yeah, we go. That's nice. it. Cool. This area, bottom point, is also a giant loop. Um, but there's that little clip you can do, which sends you from right near the start into the precise part of the loop we need to be in to trigger this fight, um, which is very convenient. Makes things easier yeah, for us. <laughs> so, oh, so that's our is... statue, by the way, the goddess of the streets. Um, oh, right. Someone stole that and we're mad. That's like a part of the story. <laughs> oh, right. I forgot about the goddess of the streets. Also, this is Cube. <laughs> um, she is Poison Jam's leader and also a character who is in the mid war. Um, but yeah. We're gonna just spray this first poison jam down um, before we even make it out of this initial half pipe. Super easy. Uh, the game really conveniently gives you like a full inventory of cans just on the side of every room. So each of these poison jams takes a full 30 cans to spray down, but there are enough cans everywhere that if you're careful, you can do it all pretty smoothly. Yeah, this is going pretty well so far. The worst thing you can do is bonk one of the poison jams when you don't mean to, because that will break their AI for some reason, and then they will end up just kind of... This one in particular, if you bonk him at any point, he'll go up on the rails above you, and he'll never come down. Yeah. And trying to trying to spray him is very, very difficult when he's on those rails. Poison jam's AI is such a train wreck. Um, so what they're supposed to do is that you chase them along these rails that go over the top of the rooms, and then they drop in and just run in circles. And you can easily spray them down if you're just chasing them in a circle on the ground. But if you break their AI, they'll just keep running back and forth through all of the pipes above the levels, and they're impossible to chase down. Speaking of zones that are impossible... It's Hikage time! Hello and welcome to Chapter 4, which is the least friendly part of the run. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is... Two of the hardest levels in the speedrun. One of them is, this is Hikage. Um, it's got a relatively precise trick. The quick climb is a little difficult. We'll see that in just a second. But it's also just super punishing. Um, it's divided into three areas again, um, but each individual area is very vertical. And if you fall, you have to climb all the way back up. And it is unfun. It's kind of a running joke that if there's another area we find a way to skip, we would like it to be Hikage, please. Yeah. The thing with Hikage as well is, like, it's right after Cucumber. Yeah. It's, like, you imagine get... you're on an any percent run, you get to Hikage, and then you just lose all your time that you saved because and then you the are next now in area, Hikage. Yeah, the next area has the hardest tr trick in the game, too. Like, I don't know if it's harder than Cucumber, actually. I don't know. Oh, whoops. I would whoops. say Cucumber's, like, more precise. Also, that was weird getting stuck in there. Yeah. We're trying to get up as far up this section here as we can before these guys are done talking. So I'm just going to wait here. Because if you're in midair when this cutscene starts, you just drop straight down. Yep. So I don't want to do that. I want to be waiting here so that I can go after the cutscene instead. So this is fine. Cutscenes um, kill your momentum yeah. if you're in midair. So we don't want to get caught in midair without a cutscene or without a way to get out of there. <laughs> this is the terror drone. It's some weird spider robot kind of deal i don't know yeah it's definitely a definitely a good name for your police of your, your piece of police equipment like the yep. terror drone like I, here is hayashi again in the terror drone really screams um, reassuring the local populace that you're taking care of them i don't think anyone is taking care of the local populace here but there we go uh, yeah so we just jump onto it and spray it down from there it can be a little mean to you sometimes. Sometimes it'll send you flying off, like, in a random direction. That's no fun, but Alice is good at game, and it didn't do that. <laughs> well, it, it kind of threatens to do that all the time. The outside of that terror drone is a rail, so if you hit that sometimes, it can really mess with you, because you'll just end up skating away from the terror drone when you really don't want to. All right. 
Yeah, so we have defeated the terror drone and now we're getting the tags. These last couple of tags, like on this platform, if you're super fast, you can get them before the terror drone by like making it out of the spawn area for the terror drone, but you have to climb up pretty much flawlessly. It's pretty precise. It also doesn't actually save as much time as you'd expect as well. It doesn't. <laughs> like, the climb is cool, but it's I think as well, because you have to spend more time getting cans afterwards. Because, yeah. you, like, with the route that I take normally, um, you can get more cans at the top if you get there, like, quick enough. Obviously, yeah. I had some errors on the way there, so I didn't get it this time. But in theory, you can start with more cans. So it, it's kind of like a... It's it's a it's a few seconds faster to do the other way, and that's why most people do it. But both routes are kind of like viable. Yeah, that's another interesting thing about JSRF as kind of a whole speedrun. Um, there are a lot of different kind of levels to strats. So most areas have like this is the hardest, most optimal trick, and here's a slightly easier version of this, and here's something entirely different that's way easier and more beginner friendly, um, which. I feel like as far as speed games go, it's relatively nice to newer runners. Like, if you just want to learn the easy strats, there's a route for that. Yeah, for um, sure. And like, as well between those, there's like a lot of like consistent strats as well. So strats that only lose like small, very, very small amounts of time, but they're like a lot more consistent. So yeah. it's the kind of game that appeals to like lots of different styles of play. Yeah. Like if you want to just do no reset runs like I do basically, and um, have the most consistent way of going through the game, then there are strats for that. If you want to go for like the the really big like world record times, there are strats for that as well. So it's yeah, cool. I think I heard someone describe it as having a low um, skill floor and a high skill ceiling. Also, that's so, quick hage, by the way. That's really hard. <laughs> that yeah, that jump right there that we completely ignored is like a two frame jump. <laughs> <laughs> um, that jump up from oh, the I don't mid have level up. There are cans on the billboard. You're good. Yeah, no, I was about to boost and I couldn't. Oh. And I, I nearly just jumped off the edge. <laughs> yep. Uh, so this is uh, the left side of Hikage. Uh, there was a cop fight that we did, not that big a deal. And then we're going to new on over to the right side, um, where there's another cop fight and some more graffiti. The right side is way nicer, actually, though, because there's this crane in the middle. So if you fall, you can just ride this crane right back up to the top. The other two levels, if you fall, you have to actually do the climb back up. Yeah, so we just grab these two. Um, um, having 10 is important for these, by the way. We didn't mention, but these are like armored cops. So you want to be able to boost into them because otherwise they will not be sprayable. Yeah. It's also important to grab cans in this section before you finish the cop fight because if you don't have enough cans going up to the top section, then you'll be in a really bad shape. Yeah, uh, cops not uh, drop two blue cans, which is worth 10 cans. Um, uh, when you hit them, but all of the cans from cop fights despawn when you leave the cop fight. So once the game cycles out of it, the cops or the cans disappear and you can't pick them up. So it's important to time that correctly to get them um, before the fight ends. Yeah, especially in here because like the cans for this. Oh, okay, interesting game. Thank you. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the cans for this section are all kind of like on the rails on the way up. There's no like convenient clusters of cans that you can just grab without going out into the um, the corridor between the two sections. So it's very, very annoying to try and recover cans in here. Yeah. Um, it becomes even more of an issue in like later game routes when there are more tags in Hikage, but the can, the can management, to use the proper term, is incredibly <laughs> precise <laughs> in this area. Um, yeah, so there are cans on these rails, uh, but if you need them, you kind of have to ride like the slow way up, which is no fun. Yeah, definitely. And like trying to stop on those rails is very, very awkward as well. They're like, trying to land in between the rails on the um, platforms. Well, so here's yeah. a soul unlock that we get. There it is. Just on the way out. There's a, there's a few in this zone specifically where it's like you miss one boost and then you don't have cans to try again. So it's just like small things that like aren't that big of a deal and they're not that difficult, but the pressure's there because if you make the mistake, <laughs> then like recovering is very annoying. One of the souls in Hikage is um, 
a little bit annoying to get. It's uh, not the one Aelis just got, it's an earlier one that you boost to, that I am so inconsistent at that I literally root around having a backup in case I miss it. <laughs> you just don't want to do it. I always get air four in um, Hikage if I need to, if I miss that one. That's usually my backup. Yeah. Anyway, Kibo, worst zone in the game. <laughs> we hate it here. Uh, we hate so Kibo. This is the... This is Heli Skip. This is maybe the hardest trick in the run. It was definitely the hardest trick before Cucumber showed up. Um, yeah, Cucumber's like... Cucumber is very, very precise, but you get a lot of shots at it. The thing that makes it hard in any percent is the fact you have to get it first try. Yeah. Um, Heli skip, meanwhile, is like a long period of very specific inputs that if you get wrong, then it's kind Heli's, of over. Yeah, Heli skip's kind of a different beast. It's um, very movement based rather than just a clip you need to hit. Um, so here is Kibogaka Hill. Um, when we enter, there are going to be some helicopters. We have a short window of time between when we enter and when the helicopters spawn that we can spray tags. We are going to attempt to get all of the tags before the helicopters show up, basically. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset here because um, I missed the rail, which yeah. is fine. I'll just go get my cans back. One thing we have to be really... One thing we'll be doing... We saw this in 99th Street. So at these save points, if you switch characters, it reloads the level. Um, we can't do all of the graffiti in just one cycle. We need to reload the level a couple of times. Um, so we're going to get these couple of sprays, reload the level, get the next couple, reload again, and then try to make it out of the trigger zone for the helicopters, all before the dialogue is finished. Um, it's a very slow first cycle, but we should be okay. Yeah, we're yeah. fine. Yeah, the thing you'll see us watching for is uh, the dialogue that pops up uh, when Hayashi, who is the guy wearing blue, pops up. Uh, there is one box of dialogue after him, I think, uh, which is kind of the visual cue that most people yeah. use. So, all right, second cycle. We got that spray, nice which is really out of the talking. way. We're fine, we're good. If there are, uh, like I was explaining in Hikage, there are a bunch of different ways to do this. This is of the like heli skip routes, this is the slower one, but it is also significantly easier. Technically, it's also you... um, technically required for this as well, because the fastest one that's like reasonable is um, oh, right. not doable for GG percent, so. Yeah, um, so you can do three cycle, which is what this is, um, which is you do two cycles of graffiti and then this, which is the escape cycle. We should be good. Maybe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's pretty close. Um, I think we're fine. Yeah, or you can do two cycles. There we go. Cool. Yeah, we got that's a successful heli skip. So that jump to the billboard is the end of the trigger. Oh, um, fun fact, I couldn't do this at all until um, like I like after I submitted this game for this marathon. So <laughs> I've learned this specifically to show you all today. I hope you're happy. <laughs> it's a very cool trick if you know what's going on. Oh, missed um, the kiss there, whatever. Rip. Uh, you can do two cycle, which is you get all of the graffiti kind of in one lap. Um, and then escape, but that is much more precise. And then you can do what is called Cretan Cycle. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Ace Bats, for the name. <laughs> Ace Bats, whose <laughs> donation we heard earlier named a trick, um, which is you do the escape cycle first, and then you do the graffiti at the end in this modified version of the... You get like a shorter dialogue period, and you have to get the graffiti um, then. And then we're about to get to another story character who is relevant to this Cretan cycle discussion, actually. So this is Boogie. Um, we've got a little timed movement challenge to unlock her. But for whatever reason, if you unlock Boogie, it messes with your cutscene timings and it makes Cretan cycle impossible because that dialogue period you have um, to get the last couple of sprays at the end becomes too short. I don't really understand why that happens. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone really knows at the moment. Um, but for whatever reason, yeah, like the the time between resetting the stage at the check at the um, graffiti stop and the the dialogue starting is just way too short. Please make it. Thank you. Right, <laughs> that was very close. Yeah, um, it yeah it causes the cop dialogue to just start faster for some reason. Um, 
but we don't have to worry about Cretan Cycle because it's hard anyways. Um, so we have finished Kibo's Graffiti. Um, if you can't hit Heli Skip, there's also a route you can- there are a couple alternatives. You can do two laps of the area, you can do a forward lap and then a backwards lap, which is a little bit faster, um, but a little bit more difficult. We've got options. But that was a, a successful Kibo, so. Yeah, I'm amazed that that worked, to be honest. That was the thing. I, I thought Cucumber would be fine and Heli Skip wouldn't, so it's kind of inverted. We got the really, yeah. really difficult thing, at least. Yeah, that is not an easy trick. Um, that. It's a couple minutes of really precise movement. But we yeah, did three it. cycle is definitely the most lenient. Um, and fortunately, it's it's like okay to do it for um, GG percent. Any yeah. percent is a very different beast. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, we were talking about earlier is that uh, the cutscene timings are way shorter in Japanese. Heli Skip is completely free in English. You can just ride the rails normally and you'll make it out of the trigger in time if you know even a little bit what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, because of um the, the like increased time you get with the English dialogue, it's like much, much easier. Yeah. But that was a really clean Kibo, and now we're headed through 99th Street, uh, going to the area beyond it, uh, which is the Skyscraper District and Faro Park. Yeah, I'm gonna be very safe in this zone. I thought I thought about just being like, you know, full on. I, I don't have enough to boost again. Let's just do this. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I thought about do, going like full on, like normal routing, but there is a point where you're one hit away from death, and if the if you die in this game, the run is over. We haven't <laughs> saved, so th your run is dead. So I'm gonna take some backup health, I think, just to be extra safe. Yeah, you can collect some marathon safe health or uh, not do one of the death warps. Yeah, that's uh, well. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the health. I think that's my plan. Yeah. Also, this cop fight, everyone hates it. Yeah. Um. So, if you boost, if you time your boost correctly, you knock all of the armored cops over in one. Why are these guys boost. still up? What? The hell? <laughs> okay. That's interesting. That um, doesn't usually. This guy's happen. still up as well. Yeah. Wow. That's never happened before. That's never happened. We said happened. the thing. We said, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good work. We did it. Um, but so, also, normally... What are these guys doing? <laughs> the cops are like just throwing themselves over the barrier. <laughs> they have no idea what's going on. There's one over there still. No, come on. So Nap the cop AI the is Academy. also bad. Um, the armored cops, right, you knock them all down with one boost. The other group of cops just kind of do whatever they want. <laughs> Like, yeah, that looks bad, but that's honestly kind of average for what they do. <laughs> like, <laughs> they just go in every direction. There is a semi-consistent setup um, to make their AI, AI behave, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Also, his Hayashi. Again. He tried. <laughs> we spray down Hayashi a lot. His, his poor coat, it must be so covered in paint. Yeah. Poor man. <laughs> that's a miracle it's still blue. <laughs> Truly. I think it's probably a conspiracy that the GGs have an arrangement that they only use blue paint for Hayashi. Yeah. <laughs> they respect him. <laughs> um, That's an interesting thing. He's, he's very, very unhinged. It, yeah. He's a character. Um, so... So death warping. That's a thing we do a lot of in here. This is the skyscraper district. Uh, it is a bunch of buildings and then the void. Um, <laughs> we've <laughs> we've got a pretty good understanding of which parts of the map will warp you to other places, and we are going to exploit that to its fullest extent here. Um, so we saw Aelis ride up on a rail there and then jump off into the sky. The game thinks you're coming at that from a much higher angle, and it'll send you off to the left side of the map, um, which is where we are now to get the first couple of tags. We're going to jump into the void here, which will warp us to the next building, which has the other couple of graffiti tags. Um, oh, I'm really bad on cans right now. I keep missing them. Yeah, it's okay. There are plenty. Come on, gum. There we go. <laughs> Good work, gum. She did it. I yeah. believe. This uh, part of the map is also kind of divided into three sections. There's the little center area. This is the left side, and then there's the right side. And we're just going to death warp everywhere. So back to center. Um, this is this where, is where we I'll take get the extra some... health. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go for the really scary strat, but we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna play it safe. We're gonna get some health. 
normally what you do here is you warp off to the right side um, and then you do a little section at one hit. But that is scary and not marathon safe. Is this Funyun? Are we going to hit Funyun? No, we didn't hit Funyun. Uh, just as well then. I needed the health anyway. It's fine. All right. We'll just do Onion instead. This trick is called Onion. We're going to clip through the building. It's got layers, like an onion. Um, Behold, the layers. <laughs> there we go, through the layers, like an onion. Uh, the trick that Aelis attempted is called Funyun, because it is onion, but more fun, and also fast. <laughs> yeah, I was told it was a fast onion, but I prefer Funyun I... meaning fun onion, to be honest, because oh, was... it's more fun. I was told it was fun onion. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, there's a bit of a dispute then. Yeah. Get Nestrinus um... on it, we've got to work out the, the true meaning of Funyun. <laughs> what does Funyun mean? Whoop. So that right there would have been very scary were we at one hit. This is the yeah. this section right here, you're at one health, and then you get those cans and you're good. Um, but marathon safety is good. Yeah, I decided to not end the run like halfway through. <laughs> I yeah. thought we should do the whole run. That would be quite fun, actually. So <laughs> That is what the people are here to see, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do have a couple more areas to go. Um, yeah, we're just going to be doing some more death warping at this point, so we can probably fit a donation or two in. Yeah. Oh, that was very, very shallow. Let's go again. Right. But yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Um, from Eclaprecious, we have a $50 donation. Bring in the support from the JSRF speedrunning community. We love you, Alice. Hashtag Neum. Thank you, Ekla, and oh my word, I'm curious what character that $50 has gone to. <laughs> it was it was almost definitely Rith, like, knowing Ekla. Yeah, Ekler, probably, it was probably, knowing Ekla. Okay, well, we could probably uh, get one more. Absolutely. Death walk, so. uh, from Helio Wolf, I got $20 saying, good luck, Alice, hashtag Neum. Thank you Thanks, so much, Helio Wolf. Helio Wolf is a phenomenal runner of this game. He and, uh, was world record holder at one point. I think he's now in second, but very talented. He's been doing runs recently and getting very close to taking it back as well, so. Yeah. Would you like an update on where we at for final boss character? Yes. Yeah, let's do it real quick. Awesome. So currently uh, sitting in first place with $75 is Rinth. And then at $45 is Combo. And also at $45 is Jazz. So Jazz is moving his way up. Come on, Jazz. Come on, Jazz. <laughs> do it for her. <laughs> Combo is also a very awkward character to finish the game with. <laughs> that was his bats. If, was Ace it Ace Bats? It definitely was. It was. Definitely was Ace Bats. I've got the tracker up. It was Ace Bats. Oh. <laughs> Ace Bats, you monster. I can't okay. believe you got me. Oh, this is the next like rival gang. This is the Immortals. This is my favorite boss fight in the game because <laughs> <laughs> you get them down to half health and then it's like, nah, that's good enough. And then they go yeah, to another it, area. It turns out it's not just the player that can decide if they want to quit or not. It's actually the NPCs. They can also decide if they want to quit. And the Immortals yeah. decided that they would quit there and go to the next zone, so... <laughs> They're taking the day off. Yeah. Um, so you spray them down. You only have to do, like, six cans of damage. And then they leave the area and go into Highway Zero, which is this next area. Um, and you have to finish the fight there. <laughs> Quick Immortals, new tech. Quick Immortals, yeah. The, the obligatory meme. I Pretend like it. it's new tech, that you weren't expecting it. Okay. Wow, can't believe you skipped half of the Immortals fight. I can't believe fight. I skipped the fight. Oh. Oh, um, story update, Yo-Yo got kidnapped, you know? Oh yeah, that happened. We haven't been able to play as Yo-Yo for a while now. Oh wait, I go this way. Whoops. Yeah, uh, somewhere in there, Yo-Yo got kidnapped. Me. And now we are finding out that the Immortals kidnapped him. The plot makes no okay. sense. Yeah. Please get him. Please. It's got like one can Please? of damage Please, this is left. interesting. Okay. There we go. Um, this is interesting though, because I'm normally... Okay, this is a very messy on models now. Yeah. We'll get to see slightly more of Highway Zero, which is cool. It's a cool area. You don't normally see all that much of it in shorter full game runs. I think I have enough cans. I think it's 15, isn't it? Oh, just enough. There we go. Cool. Right. Pretty good go. back up, considering I, I messed up the initial movement. Nice normally work. you kill them just as you come out of that little alleyway with the billboards, so it was only a few seconds slower. Not too bad. That's the joy of running this game like 100% and stuff and playing bingo as well is like you kind of get to know where all your backups are which is quite nice if you want to just finish a run. Yeah, there any percent will take you through a very specific route in this game but there's a ton of other stuff. Hey, it's Jazz. This is Jazz. She's the best character. Also, Absolutely, 100%. This is like 10 minutes of downtime. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> so 
This is death ball. This is the point at which the devs gave up, um, is what I like to call it. <laughs> um, so this is this like mini game, I guess, called death ball. It's like roller derby kind of. Um, you have this ball, you pass it back and forth with a partner character. Um, the rival gangs chase you around. It gives you two minutes to practice, except we don't need to practice because we're plenty good at the game. Um, <laughs> And also, yeah, so we just have two minutes to try and clip out of bounds here and do nothing. Yep. If there are so, any messages from the host, now would be a fantastic time. <laughs> donations. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I got a pretty long one here, so it works out. From Nick W, uh, $5 donation. Hello, Alice Noon. I want to hold your hand. I haven't been the same man since I saw you fly like a butterfly oh, no. through this speed run while humming the bass line and showing off your favorite moves. Like it, like this, like that. This may sound technopathic, but this run makes me think about the concept of love and how much I love love you for playing my favorite game at Frost Fatals 2022. I'm not a model, but I do have grace and glory, and I like to eat birthday cake and drink some baby tea while watching you destroy this iconic game. So, with this statement of intent, I know you'll shape the future during this run while the funky dealer plays some ill victory beats so Bach fresh that everyone will be thinking me likey the poom poom afterwards. A-list noon, keep rocking the mic with your commentary while running this awesome game that's one of the oldies but happies of my childhood. Anyway, that's enough. It's time to let mom sleep and Koto stomp the rest of the speed run. JSR Groovy Jet Set Radio. That was that so was, um, impressive. That was very good. That was every single song name from the OST for this game. Um, Shout out to the OST. That was very yeah. impressive. Thank you so much. Well, thank you yeah. to Nick W for that amazing donation. Yeah, that, that's a, that was incredible. That was phenomenal. Um, the soundtrack is kind of one of the things that this game is known for. So good to see it getting some appreciation. Absolutely. We can still probably get more donations, by the way. This is, I, I wasn't kidding. This is a long time. Yeah. Uh, the, the part after this is slow too. <laughs> like... Alrighty, we got thirty dollars here from Combo saying, "I heard it would be <laughs> awkward to do the final boss's combo, so have some combo money." <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Combo. <laughs> Thank you, Combo, for the combo. That's brilliant. I'm just trying to clip out of bounds in the middle here, by the way. It's it's really yeah. awkward, but sometimes you get there. It's it's not really very impressive. One important. Oh, there we go. It's tech. over. It's all over. All right. Don't forget to say no to jazz. So. Yep, I did. I said no to jazz. It was difficult, but I managed. Hardest it. part of the run. This is also a running meme in the speedrun community. Um, this is the only character prompt where you have to say no because what jazz is asking you is, do you want to practice again? <laughs> so if you say yes, yeah. you get thrown back into the two-minute waiting time. It's kind of a yeah. rite of passage to. Um, just on autopilot hit yes and lose a run to say yes to jazz my first ever run saved well my second I, let's put it like this my second run saved two minutes here <laughs> <laughs> um and so now we get into death ball uh our first match is against a team called the doom riders this is i think the only appearance they make in the run um but so i was saying that you're supposed to run around and pass the ball back and forth to your partner who is jazz um it's faster and also easier to just grab the ball and run some laps. And also the game is going to make us do this three times against three different gangs. So we're just going to run some laps if you would like to read some more donations. Although there is one thing we could talk about very quickly, just thinking about it. Oh, um, Because there's some, o there's some other features of the, um, well, kill strats as well, but um, also there's some other features of this custom XPE that we haven't talked about. Um, one of which being um, universal control effects. I don't know if you want to oh. get into the meat of that or not. Um. I can. It's a hot topic. Um, <laughs> so this, as Alice mentioned earlier, we play on a kind of custom build of the game. It is most of the functionality of the regular game, but with some quality of life options like skipping cutscenes and our modders recently implemented a controller fix because this game is played on original xbox which is increasingly hard to come by um so controllers degrade really quickly um and so in the name of hardware preservation we have a uh tweak that lets you use older controllers um Controllers really quickly lose their ability to hit max speed, which is really important for maintaining momentum and hitting more precise jumps and stuff like that. So we have a cool mod that helps you hit max speed on older and slightly degraded controllers. 
Um, yeah, it's a bit basically throughout like the the run, um, the controller will like the Xbox will eventually lose track of like where the max point of the controller is. So when you push like as far as you can on the joystick, the Xbox doesn't interpret it that way anymore. So it just kind of adjusts that point so that it's still capable of doing everything a controller should be able to do. Yeah, our modding scene is really incredible. We have all sorts of mind-blowing stuff you can do in this game. Um, most recently, we have a warping co-op mod, which feels important to shout out. Um, you can, using some technical wizardry, connect to other players and co-op the game on original hardware. Um, oh, also this trick is worth explaining. This is kill strats. Um, changing topics very quickly. Um, so uh, the first gang we fought in this area is called the Doom Riders, and we just did the race normally. The next two games, or gangs, the Immortals and the Love Shockers, have the lowest health of any character in the game, so it is faster to punch them to death than it is to do the race. Um, yeah, so long as you get it like efficient, that is. like Otherwise, it takes longer, but... Yeah, you have to do that clip out of bounds we saw Aelis doing because it breaks their AI and makes them stand still. Otherwise, they'll keep trying to run in a lap and it's hard to kill them like that. Yeah, they're, what they're trying to do is get to the ball and I've thrown the ball out of bounds so they just don't know what to do now because the ball is nowhere near where they are. Yeah, so that killed them. Killing them ends the race. Um, we've got that and we're going to do it again with the Love Shockers. We're also good characters. We don't unlock them in GG percent, so they're not on the character the dwarf, but they're great. They are my favorite character. <laughs> I love them very much. Yeah. Um, it's one of the reasons why I run 100% is that it's the only category where it's optimal to use Love Shock is for any part of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, putting the death in death ball. Yeah. So we're going to do the same trick again. We're going to jump up on a half pipe in just a minute, uh, clip out of fans, throw the ball, break the AI, and then punch them to death. Speed tech. We're just going to be doing that again, so um, we can probably read donations here, and we'll go straight yeah. into a cutscene that's really long as well, so there's no 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 rush. So yeah, after this we've got a boss fight, but it won't require much explanation. All right, you got it. I've got a twenty-five dollar donation here that says, "Word on the streets is Alice is a very cool person," <laughs> and you know I'm inclined to agree. You're a pretty darn cool person. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I think I know who that might be though. <laughs> and. This is actually a really good opportunity to remind everyone that we have our first bonus game milestone open right now, which is going to be Final Fantasy VII Intergrade Intermission. We need to raise $50,000 to get that bonus run, and we need to hit that total by the end of the Pokemon run later today. We've already passed $38,000, so I absolutely know we can get that done today. So get a, yeah, get a donation in, pick your incentive, and get a chance to win some prizes. Unlock the game, because every donation today will go towards that incentive and that bonus game. So we're going to be done with the kill strats really soon. They're getting kind of spread out. This is the unfortunate bit is like the 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 iframes they get is actually like random. Yeah. Um, so but you want to keep them close together so that you can hit them as soon as possible. Seeing this, this done like super optimally hit. is really impressive. You have pretty precise movement to keep them together, but also hit them at high enough speeds that they actually take damage. Um, yeah. And now this we're is also one scene. of the cutscenes that's longer in um, Japanese than in English. It's one, It might be the only one, I think. It's the only fact, one that's is, like yeah. significantly longer. Yeah, no, it is, definitely. Um, so Hayashi, Hayashi's laugh is the main reason. When you think he's done laughing, he's not done laughing. He's, he's still laughing. He's not laughing. done laughing, yeah. Uh, we're also going to see laughing. that the terror drone is making another appearance um, yeah. for some reason. And this this just version of the terror drone is annoying is uh, as the other one it's like it shouldn't be hard but sometimes you get stuck on the rail and then it's just there yeah game hard but we will survive uh if you want to read more donations this is probably a good point because hayashi is just going to keep laughing yeah absolutely i've got a 50 dollar donation here from mewtwo also no comment but hey thank you so much for your donation and uh, from Sky Fox, I've got $25. What a wonderful cause. I absolutely agree. And then from Nadio, I have $20 here. No comment, but hey, thank you so much for your donation. So here we go. For the Terra Drone, we want to jump on top and then just spray all of these. Just that like that. Smooth. And then and get then... underneath, and it's got like a donut laser thing in the middle that we're just going to spray down as well. 
Some people, easy if you peasy. get if you get hit by the laser, some people call it getting Krispy Kreme. <laughs> Wait, really? I've never heard that. That's amazing. It's, it's an older strat name, but yeah. Um, ha, cool. Ha, cool. Everyone say cool. <laughs> Everyone say cool now. You have no choice in the matter. Cool. Cool. So coming up is the um, the noise tanks. Um, this this section of the game is kind of it's a little it's different. A thing. It's Change a of thing. pace. Yeah. Um, the noise. So we have defeated the immortals because we killed them in Death Ball, um, and now we are fighting the noise tanks, who are uh, kind of the third overarching gang that we fight. They're robots. They've got jetpacks. They're cool. Um, they're literally everywhere. They're literally <laughs> everywhere. This uh, chapter, or this, yeah, this chapter is noise tank cleanup. So we are going to run around and hit them, and they are going to explode. <laughs> we're going to run through a bunch of the areas from really early on in the game. So we're back in Dogen. Um, I think we have to hit like 200 of them. They're everywhere. Uh, this chapter is a really interesting kind of movement exercise. There's no graffiti, so it's just... Your ability to do this is just how well you can move around the game. Um, yeah. Also, we're going to pick up that soul we unlocked earlier. Yeah, the one tape soul we unlocked. <laughs> Specifically for <laughs> the this first moment. Soul we unlocked, yeah. And the only soul we've unlocked, I guess. But it's gonna run around and beat up some noise tanks. Oh, this might go also be a good ball. time for a donation. We're gonna run back into Shibuya and Chuo and RDH, but we have already seen them and we're just gonna keep hitting these guys. Alrighty, uh, I have a $125 donation here from Anonymous, no comment, but thank you so much. And uh, from Mar and Gak, I have a $25 donation that just says, Jet Set Radio! So true. Amazing. So true. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of um, interesting, like, how a lot of people know the original JSR, um, Jet Set Radio, or Jet Grind Radio, which was on the Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, but th but this particular game, like, not as many people have played it. But I personally prefer this one. I know that it's going to be major rose tinted glasses because I grew up with this one. But I, I I feel like the movement's a bit more fluid in this. Yeah, they're very different games, kind of gameplay wise. Um, this game really r lends itself to kind of fluid movement through areas. It's a little. It's more open world than JSR is as well. You can kind of run through all of the areas really quickly. Um, I feel like JSR is a little more like trick-based and like menuing and stuff like that. And this game is mostly just movement. But both of them are good speedruns. Definitely, yeah. And I mean, JSR players don't have to worry about the stupid graffiti camera, so this I think they're the real winners here, right? Like, Yeah. Uh, that guy can live. He earned it. <laughs> There are also, um, the route we take us, we take through these areas hits slightly more noise tanks than we need so we can afford to miss a couple. This jump is cool. Or... If I get it. Fingers crossed. Ooh. No, I didn't get oh. it. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. We'll get if my back up in, um, RDH instead. Yeah. If you hit, there are, um, some noise tanks on top of that bus and if you hit it at just the right angle, it'll kind of launch you directly onto the platform but it's pretty precise. Yeah, and it's not really that essential either because like you can get basically the same number of tanks that you missed as an extra group in RDH instead. So we're just yep. running straight across there now. We're back to RDH. Um, and then we're going also, to Also, remind me to unlock Jazz, please. <laughs> How could you forget? It I know <laughs> I know that in theory I shouldn't, right? But, but. I did do an 80% run for practice earlier and you don't get the extra characters in that, so. True. Uh, so we're going to finish up our noise tanks in 99th Street after this area, and then we're going to go get Jazz, who is our second to last unlockable character. No, third to last. We've got Cube. I forgot about Cube. <laughs> oh no. Mustn't forget about Cube as well. I have to get her on the way to um, FRC. Yeah. Cube is one of the only char unlockable characters in GG% percent, uh, where you kind of have to go out of your way to get her. Um, well, Jazz, technically, you are right by the spawn zone, I guess, for her, but... Yeah. Cube I is mean, the most out of the way. Cube is the most out of the way, yeah. Um, so we're going to finish this up here. And then 
Uh, the way we unlock Jazz is a, a race. Uh, we're gonna run around the Death Ball track. Uh, it takes about a minute. Um, if you time this, I think the any percent and GG percent drops are slightly different here. Cause in any percent you get those noise tanks up on the highway, like on your way back up. But here we're. Oh, want I to didn't finish, do that. I I, uh, I get them down here anyway. Yeah. I do too. Hundred percent. Hundred percent run the brain. <laughs> <laughs> It's because I run 100% a lot more than any percent. So, and like c categories that get all the characters specifically a lot more than I would run any percent. So it's yeah. just muscle memory for me at this point to come down here. Yeah. So you finish up at the bottom and then we are right by the entrance to the Expo Stadium. Oh, that went the wrong way on the rail. Thank you very much, Thank game. Thank you, rail. That's been a theme of this run is just jumping on a rail and it just goes completely the wrong direction from what I'm expecting. This game physics are wild hey. all right Here she is it's her best girl everyone best say girl. hi jazz um yeah so this we're just gonna run around this track one thing i didn't mention in death ball actually is that the ball that you're holding um takes the place of your boost button um so if you hit b instead of boosting you'll throw the ball um which is an interesting mechanic except that it makes it slow and so we don't like it um, yeah, because if you drop the ball at any point, it resets the point you have to take the ball to. So yeah, it re not like, only is it lap. slow to not like hold the ball, it's also slow to like do more of the race. Yeah. Anyway, this time we can boost, so we can do this even faster, um, and we get jazz out of it. So the superior Expo Stadium experience. You'll see people placing bets on how long the race is going to take in chat. It'll be between 55 seconds and a minute, uh, ideally. Yeah, it's a very regular occurrence in the JSRF speedrunning community is like, as soon as someone's in a race, everyone starts like trying to work out how long it's going to take. 55.41. It's not bad. Not bad for a jazz race. Not bad. I'll take it. Super solid jazz race. Yeah. And so now we are... Uh, oh, we destroyed all the noise tanks already, so we're actually going on to our final battle with them already, which is in one of my favorite areas in the game, Sky Dinosaurian Square. I do <laughs> which, like Skadino. It's a good zone. <laughs> which is a really ridiculous name for an area, now that I'm saying it out loud. Um, <laughs> it's a, basically a big amusement park on top of, like, skyscrapers and stuff. Dinosaur-themed, obviously. It's dinosaur-themed, yeah. So we're It's gonna... also terrifying. <laughs> It makes it really easy to fall into the void and die, but it looks so cool. Also, I uh, want this trick. I want it. Come on. Go for it. This wall is a suggestion. You can just clip right into it. And then we're, there gonna, we go. we're fine. We got it. <laughs> the fastest like warp up to the dino entrance is on the other side of that wall, but the wall is fake and we can just run right into it. Poison Jim is up here for some reason. We're, he's gonna tell us something. Yeah, I don't remember I, I what. Think, <laughs> I think they're up there because because Yo Yo be, the 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 Yo Yo that we're chasing. Spoilers may not be the real Yo Yo. Um, spoilers. Uh, yeah, beat them up. Um, that's why that's why Cube shows up to to confront them is because he beat up Poison Jam. Oh right. Yeah, see, it all makes sense. It now. all makes sense. Okay, so it's this all is coming Sky together. Dino. Look at look at that T Rex. Isn't it? Oh, he's glorious? great. Look at his little look, look at his little arms. So we're going to chase the noise tanks around in here to do kind of a taggers tag fight like we did with, did with the other gangs, except it's at an amusement park now. I do think um, in terms of like level design, when you're designing a skating game, making a roller coaster level is like a very good decision. <laughs> yeah, it's just as a speedrunner, especially doing a taggers tag fight in it, it's very, very frustrating. Like it's Because if you knock these guys but... off at any point, then that's it. Like. Also, their AI continues to be really finicky, so we're just gonna let Alice do this. She's gonna knock this first one down right in this little entrance area, and then chase the other two on the rails. Um, okay, the first one going down is like that you can breathe a bit now. Yep. Uh, normally, Sky Dino has a really complicated like death warp plane as well, like skyscraper distance. Oh no! Oh no! I knocked them off. Okay, I went slightly too fast. That's fine. It's we'll get this one, and then I'll work out what to do. So he's back at the start now, I think. Yeah, so normally Sky Dino's death plane is really complicated, but in specifically this Tagros tag, they disable all of the regular death planes and everything just whoops you back to the start, which is a little convenient. 
but we knocked one of them off earlier. So let's hope it's AI didn't break too much. Um, it should just be stood there at the start. Yeah. Sometimes they just stand there. Sometimes they go and wait at that platform in the middle. Um, worst case scenario, it got stuck on some collision somewhere in the um, level. That's the dead one. Yeah, that's the dead one. Where's the other one? Is he? He's like halfway around the, now. Yeah, it might be at the midpoint platform. It's not this guy. He's dead. Nah. No, it's this one. This one that's flat on the ground. What is this? I've never seen this before. No, that one's no, dead. No, wait. No, it's not. No, he's still moving. Okay. Oh, it's moving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay, usually, so yeah, he's going to the midpoint platform. That's very weird. I'm not used usually to that. Usually, when they get knocked okay. off, they go panic and... over. I thought we'd soft block <laughs> somehow, but um. Yeah. Normally, um, the noise tanks go and wait at this platform kind of midway through the level, or they go back to the start. Um, it can be a little difficult to figure out where they are. Their AI is, again, super unpredictable. We're yeah, pretty so we're sure just, they made uh... this game's AI like in the two weeks before development. <laughs> the last thing they added. But So I'm going to jump up here and get is. him moving. And then I'm going to chase him down from here. Oh, I fell. Uh, oh, okay. oh, well, it's fine. So He should so, be on his way back to the start now, so I can just wait here. Yep. So the This, is, this has... is why this fight is scary. If you, if you make, like, one mistake, then you are now playing this bizarre game of trying to work out where the noise tank is. Yep. Um, so we got... We triggered his movement from that platform, so he is now heading back to start. So we have to just wait here for him. If you would like to read a donation, we're just waiting. Yeah, go for it. Here he comes. There he is. <laughs> there he is in the distance. Absolutely. Uh, I have a $15 donation here from Combo again. If you forget about me, you can be Combo and the final boss instead. <laughs> and I also have a $10 donation here from Ace Bats. Oh, I heard no. you talking smack about anti cleanup, AKA the best chapter in the game. So here's 10 oh, more dollars like towards Combo. <laughs> Bats. Can't believe you've done this. <laughs> and it, and it, yeah. it looks like Combo is sitting at a comfortable lead at $100. <laughs> so you looks like you are going to potentially be playing Combo at the final boss. If Thanks, people, everyone. If people would like to know how bad a character Combo is, there is a meme category called Combo Percent in which you play the game as Combo because it's that much of a challenge that it warranted its own category. <laughs> Hey, I'd still rather it than Soda or, or Cube. I'll, I'll take a character with 30 cans any day. Like, Fair enough. Yeah. Right. Speaking of characters, Clutch. Boo, he's the worst. We hate him. This is Clutch. He's going to... Oh, so this is the other point at which the game checks how many graffiti souls we've picked up. This guy, Clutch, is going to show up. And he's going to say, hey, nice graffiti souls, and steal them. And then we have to chase him down. Um, we have enough, so he's going to run away. Uh, I'm not he, sure what he thinks the benefit of this is, though, because he's like, oh, yeah, get me some souls and I'll tell you where Yo-Yo is. And then he takes the souls and just runs off. Like, it's not he, like he loses anything by telling us where Yo-Yo is. I'm not entirely sure what his angle is here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Clutch is a character. He's a jerk. <laughs> we have lots of fan favorite characters. Clutch is like the fan unfavorite. <laughs> Unless your name is Fosso Hydro. <laughs> Call out. Um... Yeah, so we are going to chase Clutch. He goes into Kibogaka Hill first. We can meet him there, but we have to get Cube also. Do you get her yeah. before or after? We get her before. Gotcha. Fortunately, because of a quirk of how this game works, um, on every version except the European PAL version, um, the timer for Clutch moving to different zones doesn't move while you're inside bottom point. So while we're in here, Clutch is just going to stay exactly where he is. So that that's just like an interesting thing. Like if you're playing on the European version of the game, you would not be able to um you would not be able to do this. You'd have to get clutch first and then come back. Yeah. So we're going to do that clip we did again earlier when we were on our way to Poison Jam. Except this time we're going to see Cube and we're gonna race her around the level and unlock Clips being her. mean again. This clip sometimes just likes to ruin your life. <laughs> it's yeah, unkind. it's happening right now. There we go, we got it. All there right. we go. So we're going now to cube. get Cube, um, and then we're going to go meet Clutch in Kibo to recollect our souls, because he stole all of them. He's so rude. Okay, I missed the, the cool jump, but it's fine. There's no cool jumps cube. for you. No cool jumps, I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried. I used to pull my energy on Heliscope. 
understandable. That was worth it. Um, oh, okay, interesting. Thank you, game, for that. Really I was just that. about to mention that it's also kind of a running community meme that nobody knows how to do this race optimally. The world <laughs> record for this category has like a terrible time in this race. Um, oh, there we go. But we're doing all right so far. Oh, <laughs> apparently, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing the right things, it's just not ending up in the right result. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how bottom point is. Um, I don't think we've mentioned explicitly, so these half-pipe things have the weirdest physics in the game. Oh yeah, because it puts you in a state where you're kind of like on a ramp permanently. Yeah. And ramp physics are very odd. Yeah, you get some really weird physics. Um, some of them you can like turn around on quickly, some of them you can't. Uh, you get relatively unpredictable jumps out of them, like, half-pipes are just a disaster, and bottom point and sewers are all half-pipes. There we go. Um, well, considering there have been some major mistakes, I'm kind of okay with this cube race uh, yeah. so far. Oh, terrible. Let's Ooh, see. Oh, I did not get the jump there, though, so we just have to grind down. The grind of shame. Yeah, a regular time for this is like a 130, between 130 and 135, I would say. Yeah, sub-130 is, like, is doable, but not with those mistakes, so. That anyway, was that's very key. close that's to someone's um, guess. <laughs> that was that like... is um, five out of the six optional... Oh, okay, we did a hand plant for some reason. Um, five out of the six optional characters for this category, so we're very yeah. nearly done with the GG percent requirements. Yeah. Um, now we just have to make it out of bottom point. Uh, the clip will get you in super quickly. There isn't a clip back out, though, so you have to wander back out. You have to do half of the race again, effectively. Yeah, and look, I've done it all, like, correctly this time. This is what this is supposed to look like, yes. I couldn't do it when I was actually racing cube, but I can do it now. <laughs> the pressure's just so much less, you know, I can cope with it a bit better. Then have cube chasing me down. Yeah. Is it, well, Cube is on our team now. We're friends, so yeah, she doesn't need to chase you. Well, that animosity from the first three chapters of the game is completely forgotten. Completely <laughs> gone. We've forgiven her. Um, now we're going into Kibo. Uh, the, so the government has updated their cop arsenal. So now we have the Golden Rhinos, who are like a secret military, uh, who are way stronger. But if we reload the level at this character spot, the cops just disappear and we don't have to do the fight. Um, so we can just run up, talk to Clutch, get our souls back, and head into the next area, which is the It's one of the few places where you can spray um, tags during cop fights as well, because um, if you don't do heli skip, you don't have that graffiti stop sprayed, but you can still spray it and do the same skip, so it's very odd. Yeah, it's weird. It's like a weird little inconsistency. Um, but it's exploitable. <laughs> anyway, FRZ, uh, this zone's really cool. When it when it goes well, it's it's really, really cool. Yeah. So this is the fortified residential zone. Um, we are, instead of spraying regular graffiti, we're going to run through this area and spray these weird bomb devices. Um, the game gives you a timer for this part to kind of impose a little extra <laughs> challenge. Unfortunately, they give you half an hour of timer and this takes maybe a minute. <laughs> like, even if you don't have a speedrun route and don't quite know what you're doing, it takes like five minutes. They give you half an hour. Now, like... I'm gonna hold my hand up here and make an admission. When I was, when I was a kid, um, I did at one point not like successfully find one of the, one of the things and I did actually lose to the half an hour timer. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I can understand a little bit with like the top section of this, but like the bottom is so quick. Oh yeah, it, it was the top section. Okay, uh, after we clear this okay. like bottom layer of FRZ, we're gonna do the same challenge again with more um, bombs in kind of a wider area. And it gives you half an hour again. That part takes a little longer and is a little harder to navigate. Also, these jumps are really cool. Oh yeah, did you get a ladder jump? No, I, I didn't get a lot of jump. I tried oh. to, but that's my favorite thing. Yeah. But uh, these jumps, these like big jumps across the stage, they're really, really nice. Yeah, the routing in this area is super neat. Um, you kind of fly all over the place. Uh, you can also get ladder jumps. It's a 
Is it frame perfect or two frame uh, where you jump? It's very, very tight, yeah, but it looks cool. Yeah, you jump basically directly from a ladder like onto the ladder above you, so you don't have to zigzag back and forth across the platforms. It's super precise, but it looks really neat and it's fast. Also, I don't think we really... Also, this jump's cool, if I get it. World record jump. Uh, no, I missed it. Unfortunate. That um, jump. And I missed that as well, so that's fun. Oh. <laughs> uh, you can do a jump there. You boost jump and land directly on the next layer of this, uh, so you don't have to go up the staircase. It's called world record jump because there was a period of time where it killed multiple world, world record pace jump or runs. And then you can do a slightly harder version of that where you then jump up another layer called Universe Record Jump, because that is the next <laughs> tier of record. <laughs> universe Record I didn't even know about that one. All the trick names in this run are so good. <laughs> also, we didn't really talk about, like, tricking on, um, like, air tricks and grind tricks. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. mention that, did we? I don't think I did. I mentioned that super briefly at the start, but... Uh, when you're on rails, if you hit X or Y, you'll do these little, like, skate tricks, and it maintains your momentum. Um, you can also unlock souls by keeping up high trick combos, but that's not really relevant in this category. You can also do it in air to negate fall damage, which is useful. Um, that jump is also cool. You fling yourself across. Um, FRZ is one of my favorite areas because it is also incredibly vertical, like Hikage and Sewers, but unlike them, it actually gives you ways to navigate your way back up if you fall. So it's a little less punishing. Um, and it's this giant, wide open, super tall area with all sorts of weird routing for getting around. It's a good okay, experience. Can I get this cool jump at the end? So yeah. there are all of the bombs. We got a cool so jump. Go. Three minutes total required for the for the <laughs> combined hour of time they've given us. So, yep. I think we did pretty okay. Also, this jump's really cool and stupid. And I'm gonna go for it. All right. There Don't we go. Fall. Cool. Right. <laughs> All right. That saves like barely any time. Also, I lost. I failed this jump twice earlier today. So, <laughs> good. We didn't do that. There's a section of FRZ that are these mazes that are really hard, but that little jump there just flung us directly where we wanted to go, avoiding the mazes entirely. Yeah, um, the game wants you to take the mazes around, and it's just like, no, no, I also won't do now, that. <laughs> also, now the government's sending in fighter planes. Um, the RNG on these sometimes sc just screws you over. That was really clean. That yeah, was nice. That's, that, 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 that's, that's was, my that favorite might be strat. The, <laughs> that's like the cleanest I've ever seen that done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can spray the bottom one from the top. Um, so I normally just move across, spray the bottom one, and then finish up the top one. I've never seen anyone do that. That's really neat. Wait, really? Um, well, yeah. then we might we might have to refer to that as the A-list special then. That's um, the A-list special. Along with every other trick that I have named that. A-list <laughs> names um, right, everything so she finds the A-list special. All right. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes the... So those jets shoot, like rockets at you and sometimes they just start shooting immediately and just knock you over before you can even uh head towards them to start spraying um yeah now we're jazz because she holds 35 uh cans at this point in the game we're done with graffiti uh we are just doing boss battles it's like a little final boss rush we're getting pretty close to the end um yeah so if you want to get donations in um, for the character for the final boss, um, there's like gonna be a, there's gonna be a train. I don't know how else to describe it, but it... when the train's on screen, that that's kind of your last call for donations because we'll be very very close. Uh, the train looks like if someone who had never seen a train before tried to, to design a train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of explain to someone who's never seen a train what a train is supposed to look like, and then they kind of add in a, a kind of demonic flair of their own design. Yeah. It's an interesting train. It's definitely not like, it's like a very Mad Max train, Mad Max-esque. It is, This is yes. kind of bad. Um, I'm uh, probably gonna have to use extra cans here that I don't wanna use. This is Claw Guy, or as Alice likes to call him, Grabbers. Yep, because he uses his Grabbers. Um, and we use uh, Grabbers too. I think the plot here is that uh, the big bad guy has sent in Got some, of, nice. some like special assassins 
to come and attack you. And so there's this guy and there's uh, flames who we will fight next. Um, the mechanics of that fight are really cool. He has his extendable arms that you ride up to knock him down and then you just spray him down normally. You can do that really quickly, but it's pretty precise. You can like get him before he even uh, leaves his starting place. Also here's zero beat. Yeah, zero cycle on Claw Guy is very, very difficult. You have yeah. to you have to knock him down, pick up both cans whilst continuously spraying him, and then boost him before he goes up again, and you'll have just enough cans to finish him off. It's it's very challenging. Yeah. It's super precise, but uh the backup isn't that much slower. Uh which is the one cycle. So there we saw zero. Oh, there's beat, the 0.5 cycle a... that um, oh. thanks to Jakey for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Which is where, when he fires the claw up at the wall, you jump up on it before it lands, and then... You, like, jump onto his head from a platform, I think. Yeah, you get up on the platform from his arm when he fires it up the first time. Then you jump down from the platform you end up on, on top of him. And that's the 0.5 cycle. Yeah, it's... I'm not a um, fan. Arguably as hard as Zero Cycle, and a little less fast. It's like a backup, I think. If you mess up early enough in the zero cycle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are on our way to Highway Zero, uh, which is where we fought Flame, or the Immortals earlier. That is what the gang is called. Yeah. In the meantime, and I'm just going to fight a couple of co like groups on the way there. We could probably get some more donations in. Yeah. Uh, oh, also Highway Zero is where we unlock our last character. Don't forget Soda. Oh, yeah. No, mustn't forget Soda. Thank you. Nearly forgot about him. <laughs> But yeah, bid war uh, ending soon. So let's get the last couple of donations in. And the donations are flooding in. Um, I've got a $99 donation here from Neodose that just says Jet Set Radio Future. Amazing. Thanks so much. And yeah. another donation from Combo, $50. Y'all like Combo. jazz? <laughs> we do. We, we do, do like, like jazz. jazz. We're big jazz fans. <laughs> And I don't know how to explain this. I have been refreshing, keeping an eye on the final boss character, a bid war. And we, we've had a bit of an upset here. Uh -oh. Currently, we have a three-way tie between Combo, yeah. Cube, and Jazz, all sitting oh, no. at $115. Y'all, we've um, got two more levels. <laughs> yes. Oh so okay, this is very close now. I'm heading to Soda now. Um, then it's Flame Girl, then it's Train. So Yeah, we've got, like less than five minutes to figure this out <laughs> <laughs> well like i said there is a three-way tie each at 150 dollars. so if you got a preference between combo cube or jazz or you know what rinth is sitting there at 75 dollars, and and poor uh corn at 11 dollars. <laughs> i'd like to corn see some donations for corn they're hanging in there so yeah no, this is your opportunity as you said you got about five minutes to get your donations in on that bid war yeah uh we're raising soda now everyone say yo uh, yeah, he just says yo. He looks like Squidward as well. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, Soda is a weird character because he doesn't have any other story relevance. He just shows up and you can race him and he will join your team. Um, kind of like Boogie as well, right? Like Boogie doesn't yeah. actually do anything in the story. She just kind of is there and is like, hey, I'm going to join you. I mean, Rith is the same cool. way, I guess. But this... Yeah, but Rith's, Rith's like... Rith's cute, though. Okay. <laughs> we like Rith. They're all cute. <laughs> This is true. What are you saying? I'm not going to have this favoritism, okay? Uh, yeah, so this race only takes like a minute. Highway Zero is also a really good level, and we don't see all that much of it in any or GG percent, but... Yeah, it's very challenging in Hundo. To get everything optimally in here is actually very, very awkward. Yeah. So... I mean, there's Soda. We have got all the GG percent requirements. So now it's we're going to head down to fight Flame Chick. All right, this is the last fight before we go into train, and end of train is where the bid war cuts off. So, I, what do we do <laughs> if we've got what a three-way tie? What do we do tie? if it's a three-way tie? Um, runner's choice. We, we hope that that isn't. If it's runner's choice, I'll just pick none of them. <laughs> You have, a, you have a limit of time to find a consensus or I will pick Clutch. I will do it. Don't make me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Big beat. <laughs> well, yeah, the one character I didn't put on the um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Didn't put on the options. I said there that... are 12 characters and we had 11 slots, so <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not in there. <laughs> I said that Clutch is the fan unfavorite. Um, among speedrunners, Beat is also not a favorite. I yeah, think it's kind of like he's it, he's on all the promotional material for the games despite being an unlockable character with no story relevance. Like <laughs> Yeah. Yo Yo um, gets largely ignored, even though he's like the main character you play as at the start of the game and is in the story for like a lot of it. Yeah. Also, um we fight that uh assassin there, that's flames. Um we attack her or we spray her with uh, our spray paint and then she gets hit by a billboard. <laughs> Because <laughs> why not? I didn't even mention it, but Claw Guy gets blown up. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just want to point out we didn't do this. Okay, we just sprayed them with paint. What, <laughs> what happens afterwards was them. entirely their own fault. Like, we sprayed them with paint. Uh, they got crushed. Zero beat. Wait, this comes is zero back. beat. He's, a He's cool the cool character. version of beat. He's like beat, but cool. Yeah. He's weird, alien emo beat. Um, more cool tech. Last time we clipped through this wall, this time we're going to run on top of it to hit the same death warp. Much easier with Jazz than Clutch, because Jazz's trousers are slightly less baggy. <laughs> Clutch has very baggy pants. It's very hard to see where you're standing. That's why Jazz and Clutch can hold the most cans. It's They keep them in their baggy pants. Yeah, definitely. I like that that's the actual law that we have. Like, that's the best explanation <laughs> we have for these two. Okay. Oh, I refreshed the donation tracker. <laughs> Oh no. So this is train. This is when this fight is over, we have to cut off the donation thing or the character tracker. Um Would it be oh. alright if I read a couple donations before we get yeah, there? Yeah, go for it. All yeah, right. sure. I'm just doing the train thing. <laughs> Coming this is a in. Bot it's weird. Coming in from Eclipratius again, thirty six dollars. <laughs> hey JSRF fans, you want a bid war? You got it. And oh. <laughs> I have a $150 donation here Whoa. saying, actually, I think I like Boogie. Oh which my God. Which has Let's put go. Boogie in the lead with $150. <laughs> Let's go, Boogie. Oh my Let's God. Let's do it. Insane. Uh, you know what? I, I have to interrupt. I'm very sorry. I go just refreshed. Rinth is now sitting at $151. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, the train's going down. We're halfway through train already. <laughs> 30 seconds to go. Uh, Combo donated $104. Let's get corn up here too. $104. Which has, has yeah, corn incredible. sitting at $115. And you know what? I, I just love this. The B from the B movie, $10. You like jazz. Yes, we do we like do. jazz. And Let's I go also, Barry B. Benson. All right. And, oh, go ahead. The train this is, is the down. Cutoff. Who is this in charge? Who is that? So once... Once this little score screen pops up and we go through it, um, that's going to be the cutoff completely. So, who we go hard for these bid wars? This is a great bid war. I love it. I'm also, so happy we did this. the train dies super slowly because it lags your game a ton. Oh, so that's the cutoff. Yep, cut off. So now we're about to go to the character select screen. I need to know which character has won now. All right, I have. I just refreshed one last time. And it looks like with $151, the winner is Rinth. Let's All go. Right. Let's find her. There she is. There we go. Yeah. That was She has very bad air control. This is going to be very interesting. I don't even know if I can make this jump. Um, <laughs> there we go. We got there. Cool. <laughs> All right. So Rinth has the same stats as Yo-Yo, um, who we played as earlier. Uh, in the kind of ranking of characters to do the final bosses as, she is solidly not bad. Not completely optimal, not complete trash. Um, so, we're at the, the end of the run. We have two more boss battles. We're going to fight Zero Beat, who's that weird little robot we've seen lurking around. Um, we're gonna fight two of them. Uh, also, Goji making an appearance. The, yeah, this the is big, the big bad. bad guy who has been facilitating all of the chaos so far. Um, yeah, we've escalated from, from police officers to tanks to jets, and now we've gone for the the, the tower of, of human enslavement, I guess, because it's basically brainwashing everyone and sucking them all in and yeah. turning them into weird gremlin things. I don't know. <laughs> it but, goes a bit off the rails here, I'm not going to lie. You but, can see the pedestrians like swirling around in the sky in front of it, if you look closely. Yeah. Uh, so this is Dark Shibuya. Um, it is Shibuya, but it's night. Um, it's actually a different file in the game, which is interesting. But 
Uh, we are going to chase these zero beat robots around, and then we will go into the final boss battle, which is quite an experience. Um, yeah, no one's ever quite ready for what the final boss is in this game. Nothing about this game can emotionally prepare you for Akamu. <laughs> um, now let's try and do this strat with Rith. I'm sure yeah. it will be fine. I've done it with Yo-Yo before, it should be okay. Yeah, one of the things about Rith that will be interesting to work with is that she has a higher spray speed, and you would think that that means she will spray the bosses down faster, but oh, actually it means that she beat. goes through cans faster than low spray speed characters. So it'll take more cans to do the same, like, fight. Yeah, and I don't actually have enough. Look, there we go. That's, yeah. that's the effect in action right there, is I did not have enough cans to finish off that zero beat, so... Yep. The Backup can... time. <laughs> Yeah, the management in this part of the run is a little precise anyways. Um, if It depends what you do in train and how many cans you get on the it's way out down. of that. Um, there are a bunch of different ways you can approach this fight depending how many cans you have and how... And none of them involve playing as Wraith, so... <laughs> <laughs> and none of them involve Wraith. Yeah. But uh, that was a pretty good backup. Um, we got... There's a rail in Shibuya that we call the Charity Rail because it fills your can inventory up pretty quickly. So we hit that, filled back up, made it work. And now, Goji is going to keep talking. Um, or no, this is DJK. The Goji cutscene was before. So we have. I am going to try and do a very time. important piece of tech before we get there, though. So. Yes, we're going to fill up on cans and then go for the most important trick in the game, which is yes. pickle. <laughs> no, we're not going for Pickle. Oh, we're going for the Aeolus Infinite. <laughs> we are going for the Useless Infinite. That is, by the time you can reach this point um, after getting the tape, you've already unlocked the Tricks Challenge for this zone. So this you is, don't need yeah. to do this ever, but it looks cool and I like doing it. So Normally, um, the the like regular kind of goofy trick you do in that downtime is, you, is called Pickle and you try to clip into a wall. But Aeolus discovered that little like infinite loop you can do. It's completely useless, but it's cool. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and then we get sucked into the void. Anyway, this oh, is what actually, the final boss battle looks like. <laughs> yeah, this is not what anyone was expecting, I'm sure. <laughs> so, this is Goji. Uh, he is going to do like a magical girl transformation kind of deal. <laughs> That's the best way I've ever heard it explained. <laughs> he is going to turn into oh a God. giant robot and hit you with some magical beams, and we're just going to spray him down because our spray paint is super powerful. Um, yeah, I'm going to adjust my strat here as well to um, account for the fact that I'm Wraith, because I don't know if I'll have <laughs> enough cans to boost and spray him down, so I'm going to do the two boosts first, I think. Yeah, so what's interesting about this fight is that the hard part isn't like the actually fighting Akamu, it's the getting up to him. You have to jump on all of these floating pipes. There's We've pretty much worked out the most consistent route up, but this I had a really hard time with as like a casual player, like figuring out how to get up. So we're gonna boost so him we're down. we're gonna knock him down once, and then I'm gonna do the second boost here. Normally you jump down, get more cans, and then boost back up, but that's as, um, nearly missed him there, God. That's as um, jazz or clutch, or even with gum, usually you've got better spraying like for bosses. Yeah. Because as we mentioned, the spray speed is better on um, Rith, but that just means that you burn through cans faster against a boss. So you can spray sprays much quicker, but something that takes like lots of cans to defeat like a boss, it just takes longer. So, Oh, yeah. it takes more cans, sorry. So uh, Akamu, you have to boost into him twice. Um, most of the like armored cops we saw, you have to boost into them once to knock them down. Uh, Akamu has extra thick armor, so we have boosted into him twice. And now we're just going to spray. Time is going to be when the screen goes black, when his health is down. All right. Okay, we got it. There we go. And time. Time. Yeah, there's a faster strat there, but you need oh. to be ja jazz or clutch. And that's not a bad time. Yeah, not bad at all. Can I check what the um, RTA was for that? Yeah, just give me a moment. I'm just waiting to see the final time now. Amazing, cool. Yeah, pretty smooth run, honestly. I mean, Cucumber trolled us a bit, and we had a few um, few slip-ups here and there, but getting Heli Skip, getting a really nice Hukage, those were, like, two of the things I thought would go horribly wrong, so very happy. Yeah. All right, so it looks like your final time was 1 hour, 53 minutes, and 52 seconds. 
I will take that. Absolutely fine. Um, estimate was two hours RTA, so I am more than happy with that time. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, yeah, friend. thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been it's been really fun, honestly. Um, getting to show this game finally. I think I've submitted it like multiple <laughs> times for this event now. So getting it getting it in has been really 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 awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for the support from the community and everyone watching um, for the character bid war. That was that was fierce, and I that loved it. That was insane. And you didn't make me play combo cube or soda, so thank you so much for that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, shout out to the community. Honestly, like everyone, um, there's too many names to mention, um, but you've heard some through the donations. Like, thank you all so much for being here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for an insane bid war made for entertaining gameplay. Incredible. Absolutely. We did get a, a, a last second. Thing, did you? Oh yeah, no problem. We have such a great community, and so it's nice to see everyone coming together for stuff like this. The final total uh, actually was Rint at $176, with Boogie at $150 and Jazz at $135. So very close. I mean, that's just fantastic. Good lord. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah, yeah, the community thanks. came out, showed a lot of love. It was fantastic to see. Yeah. That All was right, incredible. Any last-minute words or thoughts? No, I think we've uh, we've covered it all. I've said all my thank yous and stuff. So yeah, thank thank you again to the event for having us, and it's been super fun. And I'm back for another run on Friday. Actually, I'm running Beast Wars Transformers, so I'll uh, I'll see you all then. Yeah, go check out Alyssa's run. She's good. All right, an absolutely incredible run. Thank you so much, Alice. That was fantastic. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, let's get into some donations. Um, I just want to read a couple of the ones that came in at the last second for the bid war. Um, from Eclapricius, we had $40. Rint for the win, Neom. And from Deadbolt Cafe, I like jazz. You know I like jazz too. Thank you so much. And coming up next, we are going to have Sky Bills uh, running Pokemon Stadium, a rental randomizer, defeat Erica. And then after that, you're going to get to see Kiwami ZX running Mighty Gunvolt Burst, and then Air Angels running Twin Dragons. So plenty more speed runs coming up. Stay put. And in the meantime, I'm going to read a couple donations here. I have a $25 donation here from Kausu Blue. You mean I can support a great cause like Malala Fund? and get a chance to win not one, but two amazing Pokemon paintings? Sign me up. And you know what, that is true. Currently in our prizes, we have two fabulous Pokemon paintings, hand-painted ones that you can win by getting your donation win. Any donation gets you an entry. So please get your donations in now. All right, so we will be right back after this quick break. Stay put, get a cup of coffee, cup of tea. We will be right back. Awesome, all right.
Welcome back, everyone. This is Frost Fatal's 2022, powered by Twitch, raising money for Malala Fund. Glad to have you all back. Let's get into some donations. I've got a $10 donation here from Mewtwo also. Thank you so much for your donation. And I also have a $25 donation here from Pete. No comment, but hey, thank you so much for your donation. And here from Ember Keatley, Keatley we have a $25 donation. Let's go Koga attempt. I am always here for more Pokemon. And you know what? That's a great reminder. We have an incentive open for Pokemon Stadium. If we hit the goal of $2,500 before the end of the run, Skybills will attempt to fight the fifth gym leader Koga after defeating Erica. This is something I know you absolutely all want to see. It's more Pokemon. Who doesn't love that? So get your donations in if you want to see Skybills take on Koga. All right, and coming up next, we've got a prize segment with Frozen Flygon and Scent, two absolutely wonderful people. So let's head on over and check out some prizes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another prize segment during Frost Fatales. And we are so excited to get to show you the variety of prizes that you can get entered to win when you donate to Malala Fund. And remember, you automatically get entered to win them when you donate, as long as you meet the minimum donation amount for the prize that you're interested in. And I'm Frozen Flygon, and I'm here with Scent, of course. And I'm always happy to be here, Frozen. Thank you so much. Yep, just like Frozen said, all you have to do to be entered into these prizes is donate at any point today at least the minimum donation amount for the prize you're interested in. I'm going to tell you right now, $25 minimum donation is going to get you entered into everything we are about to talk about and there are some really nice prizes in here for sure now first up from our good friend vats of goop we have this lovely acrylic meta knight keychain here is our cameraman richard's going to zoom in on that thank you richard it is a beautiful design it's double-sided perfect for your keychains and you can see a much larger version of the design over on our website, gamesdonequick.com. Head over there, click on the checker, check out the prizes if you're interested in seeing that. $5 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Vats Group for sending it out to us. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we I'll have, have our... Here. It's perfect. We have our Pokemon Stadium run coming up, and we've got the final evolution of our three classic starters from the Kanto region. We got Charizard... Venusaur and Blastoise. We got all the friends here, and this is for a $15 minimum donation to get the entire set of three donated to us and made by Kinds of Nerdy Housewife. And these are gorgeous perlers. These are absolutely adorable. Whenever I talk about perlers, it's always be the two different styles. You can either do like a see-through perler that you can hold up to the light and light will just shine right through it, or you can do a really solid melt where you can tell that that is like uh, you know, basically Sprite with like it's the a, different it's pixels. It's Sprite from the game, essentially. Yeah, exactly. You got the pixel art. And, it's and Kind of Nerdy Housewife just does an amazing job yes. of the latter. These are beautifully melted perlers. Absolutely lovely quality. My only regret is that I chose the wrong one to pick up because I'm I'm not a Blastoise fan. Oh, well, that's okay. I am, of course, okay. all about Charizard. I, of course, <laughs> as a Bulbasaur lover, got to be a Venusaur fan. You know what? That That is entirely fair. <laughs> you get all three, so you can choose your favorite again. $15 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Kind of Nerdy Housewife. Now, from a friendly anonymous donor, I'm going to hold it backwards <laughs> because it's a PlayStation Classic. I know what you're saying. So there's so many Pokemon runs today. Why a PlayStation Classic? Because we got to talk about the bonus game, Frozen, right? Absolutely, we have to. So the last run of today, if we unlock it, we got to get 50,000 as our total donations for the day. We have Final Fantasy VII. Retro the remake. Yeah, the remake of Final Fantasy. Come on, one of the most influential PlayStation games of all time. One of the most influential RPGs of all time. Absolutely. $50,000 donated to the marathon in total. You don't need to do anything special. Just get your donations in and get them in before the end of the day so we can see that run. Of course... Again, $15 minimum donation from a very friendly anonymous donor. We have a PlayStation Classic. It's got so many great classic PlayStation games, including the original Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you know, it's got Tekken 3. It's got Wild Arms. That's a super underrated RPG that I'm, I'm a huge fan of. Metal Gear Solid uh, and Intelligence Cube, the game that in middle school reminded me that I do not have Intelligence <laughs> or Cube. Or Cube. That's or Cube. Good point, good point. $15 minimum donation. Make sure to get them in today. Now, 
from K Duffels. We have this absolutely beautiful Charmander family ink painting, and it is so nice that I'm actually going to stand up and bring it closer to the camera so oh. that we can focus in more on it. This is the Charmander family line. You got Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard all done in this mini frame entirely in red ink. K Duffels has done this with just a single pen and a single color of ink, and I, I can't even, like... What the heck? How do you do this? How do you get this much level of detail and shading and design into such a small frame using only a single color? I am not an artistic person. K. Duffels clearly is, and that is an absolutely amazing uh, Charbander ink painting. $25 minimum donation. Make sure to get those donations in. And speaking of amazing paintings, Frozen. Yeah, for again, for $25 minimum donation, that's the key to getting everything we're showing you right now. You can get this gorgeous starters painting that was given to us by Carolyn Design. And oh my, the colors on this are adorable. Look how happy they are. It's they're just hanging. We got Squirtle, Charmander, Bulbasaur just having a grand old time hanging out. Like, absolutely adorable. C Carolyn's artwork is so incredible. Um, and they've actually signed and dated these uh, on the back as well. And and even given them uh, little titles. This one's called This Is Where We Started. And that oh just... Oh my gosh, I mean, it's I, so good. Fro Frozen, I'm just going to admit it. I'm old. <laughs> I'm really old. I was like five years old when Pokemon, you know, came out here. And I, I vividly remember as a kid, you know, trying to figure out what's starter I wanted and eventually decided on Charmander and this you know this takes me back Absolutely. this is memories right here it's a painting I would love to have you know hanging in my living room I can't win it you <laughs> certainly can $25 minimum donation thank you so much to Carolyn Designs for sending that out to us and thank you so much to everyone who sent us prizes because there are even more amazing prizes yes. that you could win by donating today uh, from our good friend Aski Gurumi we have a beautiful Charizard Ami Gurumi it's a little hand crocheted doll of Charizard looks absolutely adorable head over to gamesdonequick.com to see a picture of it as well as from Corky Lund we have a super cute um Game Boy styled tote bag. It's, you know, just a fully functional, fully sized tote bag with a cute little Game Boy themed image on the side oh, of it. You can awesome. see a great picture of the design at gamesdonequick.com. I love it when prizes are functional. Court, that's just, right. that's one of the things, you know, when it's just like, oh yeah, I won this and now I can use now it in everyday it. life. I'm going to bring my, you know, I can bring my Game Boy in. The tote bag, yeah, carry you, it around with you. I mean, you. you definitely did a tote bag for a yeah. Game Boy because those, <laughs> things, those things were massive. Kids today, you don't understand what handhelds were like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, $25 is going to get you one fifth of the way towards our grand prize, which is a PlayStation 5 console. $125 cumulative donation throughout the event. So $25 today, $25 tomorrow, $25 the next day. And you know what? You are going to get yourself entered in to win that amazing console. Now, that is just about all the time we have here. But as always, you should head over to gamesdonequick.com if you're not already there, because it's going to have all the information you need on upcoming speedruns you can see in the marathon you don't want to miss pokemon stadium you don't want to miss any of the amazing games that we have going on today of all the incentives that you can put your donations towards because you don't have to specifically donate for the prizes you can still put those donations towards incentives like battling koga after the run in pokemon stadium right exactly we want to keep that run going as long as possible because we know it's going to be so much fun so much chaos it's a randomizer it's um, going to be amazing. It's, it's going to be great. And, of course, you can see all of the amazing prizes that you can win by donating. Keep checking back because you never know what cool prizes are going to pop up each day. They are all good. Thank you so much to everyone who sent one out to us. Thank you so much to everyone involved. And thank you so much to all of you at home for your donations. We have already raised almost $40,000 from a lot of fun. It's court. only the third day. And it's only oh Tuesday. God. It's absolutely incredible. Like, the very first marathon we raised 54000 total, the very first Frost Fatales, and we're only day three. It feels like we're almost there. It's can, incredible. Can, can we top that today? I think we can. Twitch let's chat. Let's challenge chat. Yeah, Twitch we chat. We got this. You can make it happen. But right now, let's send you right back up to the front as we get ready for Pokemon Stadium. Don't miss it. All right, thank you so much, Frozen Flygon and Scent, for that prize segment. All of those looking absolutely amazing. Welcome back, everyone. Going to read a couple donations, and it looks like we're just about ready to get started. 